Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure Plus. How are you all? So in this video, we will see, what if Naruto was the legendary knight of hell? Here is short summary. Naruto was executed by Konoha but he ultimately got the last laugh. Reborn as Naruto, Nate, Winchester, Naruto had a good life until yellow eyes fed him demon blood and killed his mom. Now he meets up with his brothers again after saving them from Azazel, to work together to avenge their mom protect what family they have left. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. His execution had come. The 15-year-old Jinchuriki guessed that he should have seen it coming. He had no family, no friends and he was hated and reviled for holding the Kayubi. He had been beaten and starved as a child by bastard villagers taking out their frustration on him, though that stopped when Naruto got older, but he still had his education sabotaged. He had once considered Sasuke a friend, since he did not know any better, but he eventually realized he was not Sasuke's friend. Naruto was being executed for following orders, essentially. He had used force, as he was authorized to do, on Sasuke to force him back to the village. Honestly, the only thing Sasuke had to look forward to was a few nasty bruises, while the bastard had shoved two Chidoris through Naruto's. He had been forced to use the Nine Tails Chakra to get the job done but in the end, he had managed to win. Of course, after he dragged Sasuke back to the village, he was arrested and thrown in jail for a month before he was told by Kakashi who revealed his true colors like everyone else, that he was to be executed by Sasuke to allow him to gain the power if the Mangekyu Sharigan. Naruto thought it was hilarious as a real friend would not kill their friend, and if Naruto had still thought of Sasuke as a friend then, he didn't anymore. The people in the village came to the execution square, trying to see the demon brat finally die, and at the hands of the Uchiha no less. Ready to die, you pathetic loser. Don't worry. Your death will bring me one step closer to killing Itachi, and one day becoming Hokage. Wasn't that your dream? I hope you don't mind if I take that as well, seeing as you won't be needing it, said Sasuke, madly grinning at Naruto, as he got his Chidori ready, and the crowd cheering for the Uchiha to kill the demon brat. Sasuke, you can have that stupid dream, as I'd rather take my own life than be the ruler of these pompous, blind morons, or having to look at that stupid duck butt haircut of your for a minute longer. So get it over with, you son of a whore. Unless you're afraid, scaredy cat, said Naruto, knowing how to bait the Uchiha by attacking the brat's easily wounded ego. I'll show you who's afraid, said Sasuke as he slammed the Chidori into Naruto's that pierced the boy's heart while looking the blonde right in the eye. One last thing before I die, bastard. I'm not your friend. I never was. You called me. A nobody, reviled me as a loser, and insinuated. That I was worth less than the dirt on your sandals. It brings me such. Dot joy at the revelation of your lost opportunity to gain what you've wanted from the start, said Naruto, laughing at the shocked look on the Uchiha's face. And now, for the coup de grace, Naruto whispered as he went limp, thinking about his final, fuck you, to Konoha that he had given. Flashback the Kyubi's cage, as this the world you died for, father. The world you created, you should have let Kagaya kill these humans. These humans are nothing but broken, flawed abortions. They are better off dead. Kayubi thought as he watched the vile humans from inside his vessel's mind, who they had just killed. In front of the gate, Naruto's conscious mind shimmered to life and looked up at the Kayubi. I'm sorry, said Naruto, confusing the Kayubi. What? Kayubi said. I'm sorry that you had to be stuck in here with me. I'm sorry that you were going to die with me, Naruto said. Kit, Kayubi said not really sure what to say. We can't save each other. We both know that. But we can avenge ourselves. Make them all pay for what they did to the both of us, Naruto said. I take it you have something in mind, the Kayubi said. Tell me, Kayubi. Ever hear of a kamikaze? Naruto asked as he began constructing the seal. Flashback end in the real world Sasuke waited until death took Naruto to see Sasuke had not acquired the Mangekyu Sharingan. As Naruto hung in his chains with a smile on his dead face and a hole in his, with cheers filling the air at him finally being dead, and Sasuke glaring hatefully at his corpse, a shockwave of chakra as felt throughout the village, a very familiar chakra. Oh no, Jiraiya muttered. Jiraiya was right as a bright white light emitted from Naruto's corpse, 
before a massive explosion of energy was released from his corpse, traveling past the borders of the village, extending for 100 miles out from its epicenter, burning and killing everything it touched, killing off all of Konoha. Supernatural Dimension May 2, 1983 Mechanic John Weiner paced the hallway of the hospital as his wife Mary screamed in pain from brining their second and third child into the world. They were very happy to discover they were having twins. John stopped pacing when he heard the cry of a newborn, just as a nurse walked put smiling at him, congratulations Mr. Weiner, it's two healthy boys. John smiled brightly as he was lead into the room, to see his beautiful wife smiling down at two bundles, Mary? John, they're so beautiful. Mary said allowing John to see their eldest baby while she held Sam. Naruto looked around the room his deep blue eyes holding some intelligence in them which surprised John, who also took notice of the three whisker-like marks on the babe's cheeks. Are those whiskers? John asked. Yes, the most unique set of birthmarks I've ever seen. A nurse nodded as John looked back down to his middle child who grabbed his finger with a surprisingly strong grip. So have you decided on a name? The nurse asked just as thunderstruck. Naruto. Mary said having remembered the word from one of her trips to Japan and its meaning. His blonde hair also reminded her of one of her father's old hunter friends, Minato, who passed away before she made that deal with the yellow-eyed demon to bring her husband back and live a life away from hunting supernatural creatures with him. Let's call him Naruto Weiner. The nurse looked confused at the foreign-sounding name but shrugged as it wasn't her business. John looked thoughtful before he nodded in agreement, as he could always call him Nate as a nickname. Welcome to the family, son. John said holding his baby and smiling down at him before he looked to his wife smiling brightly when the baby smiled at him, when John handed Naruto back to Mary so he could hold Sam. At least I have a family this time. Naruto thought happily as he just basked in the love his new family had for him. Six months later November 3, 1983 a man with yellow eyes opened the door to the Weiner home, and walked right in. This man was possessed by a demon from hell, but not just any demon. There were only four demons of hell that had yellow eyes and they were the princes of hell, the lieutenants of Lucifer, turned into demons right after Lilith, and leaders of his armies. At least that's what they were supposed to be. Only Azizel, the prince possessing the man, still cared about the master plan while the others were just screwing around with their hobbies. Ramil preferred to be left alone to collect weapons and fish, Dagon liked to play with her toys, and Asmodeus, the weakest, was impossible to deal with after he discovered KFC, dressing up like and cosplaying as an evil Colonel Sanders. Less heathens, the lot of them, thought Azazel. Anyway, ignoring those useless idiots, Azazel had eventually managed to find a way to contact his demonic father a decade ago and set about to make deals with certain women to create special children as potential hosts for his master, and set about making plans to open a certain devil's gate that required Samuel Colt's special gun to open, which was another reason he needed the children, so that he could get the gate open and free Lilith so she could break the 66 seals on Lucifer's cage and free him. One of those women that he made deals with had been Mary Weiner. He had been surprised to learn to that Mary Weiner had given birth to twins recently, Naruto and Sam. He had only expected Sam, and his elder brother Dean, due to the whole prophecy about Dean and Sam being Michael and Lucifer's true vessels. But hey, he was never one to look a gift horse in the. He inspected the babies as he snuck into the nursery to find both Naruto and Sam were awake. He inspected Naruto first, to find the intelligent baby looking up at him, studying him, before seemingly glaring up at him, surprising Azizel, as he knew babies were not normally like that. Well, aren't you a spunky one? Azazel commented to Naruto. Hmm, maybe I'll feed him more than the usual amount. May as well make the battle royale interesting. Azizel then slit his wrist deep and held it gently against Naruto's, while opening the babies, letting a lot of demon blood down Naruto's throat, at least ten times more than the usual he fed his other special kids. Let's see how you develop, kid. Now, for dad's true vessel. Azizel thought just as Mary came by, feeling groggy and sleepy. John, she asked, thinking it was her husband standing over her youngest son's crib, is he hungry? Azazel makes a sssshhhh sound, and Mary, still thinking it's John, shrugged and walked away. He slit his wrist again and held it over Sam, dropping his demon blood into Sam's as baby Sam edit. Mary rushed back into the room after Azizel gave Sam a good amount of his demon blood, more than the other children and about as much as he gave Naruto. He turned around with his demon eyes flashing, and Mary was stunned. 
it's you, recognizing him from when she made the deal. She tried to approach him, but he used his telekinesis to force her up against the wall, before moving her up the wall and onto the ceiling, starting a chain of events that would change the supernatural world in the coming years. 22 years later October 1, 2005 Missouri A black 1969 Boss 429 Mustang pulled up to a bee collector's house in the country, mostly removed from civilization. The door opened and out stepped a muscular 6 feet 3 inches man with spiky blonde hair, cold blue eyes, and muscular build. His other noticeable features included his whisker marks, and the Biko Australia men's black leather necklace with arrowhead pendant around his neck. This was Naruto, Nate, Weiner. Naruto had been having a good life until the yellow-eyed demon fed him demon blood and murdered his new mom, who he never got a chance to form much of a bond with because she was killed when he and Sam were six months old. Naruto could still remember that night vividly, and it burned him inside that his mother was taken from him again. Naruto and Sam had grown up on the road with their elder brother Dean and their father John. Naruto and Sam were not allowed to actually hunt with their dad until they were twelve. Naruto immersed himself in the trade, learning many skills. He preferred up-close fighting so he became an expert in boxing, taekwondo, and krav maga, and more or less mastered kali knife fighting, though he was still a great shot with a gun. He also studied and memorized as much knowledge as he could on the supernatural world and became a decent tactician. He was also pretty rich, as there was this one job where he hunted and killed a lone kitsune that was offing rich millionaires and taking their money. He killed that kitsune and took the close to $100 million he had collected and invested it and saved it, since hunting and living on the road was not cheap. Three years ago, Sam left the family hunting business for Stanford University, majoring in law. Naruto had considered going with Sam, since he loved his twin brother, but given that Naruto was a former shinobi who had been beaten and betrayed unto death, and a man who has only ever lost everything he cared about, he knew that a simple life, while he wished he could have it, was not for him. He still visited his brother for a day every two months, to catch up and see how he was doing. A few weeks ago, something strange had happened. He had woken up that morning for an early workout. Just a routine one in the place he was staying at had a gym. He went in and did his normal workout but found when he did his workout that the amount of weight he could lift was three times more now. He also could run a whole marathon in an hour and he was only breathing a lit hard. It got weirder when the next day, he saved a person who had gotten into a wreck and was being crushed to death by a car and he lifted it of her by himself. He, at first thought that was it, but when he woke up two weeks later, still had the super strength and stamina, on top of now being able to produce fire and lightning from his hands, he knew he couldn't ignore this. It wasn't too hard to put together that whatever Azizel had done with the feeding him demon blood thing had given him these powers, but he didn't know why. He looked through every written record his family had to find something that could help him until he found an old leather journal by Colette Mullen, his great ex-5 grandmother. In it, she had written down everything she knew about the supernatural world, including her husband being the retired father of murder. Cain, elder brother of Abel. The last entries were by him, detailing how she died, and he stopped killing after giving their daughter to a family that could take care of her and protect her, and that daughter is the ancestor of Naruto's father. One locator spell later, and he found himself here at Kane's house. Before he could formulate another thought, the beekeeper he saw taking care of the bees on the property vanished and appeared behind him. Well, Naruto heard as he turned around to see Kane standing behind him, you found me. Now, what do you want? Later inside the house Naruto sat inside the rather lovely home for a single man who is the first murderer in history. But then again, he is retired, as seems to be doing all right for himself. Do you keep bees? Kane asked Naruto, who was inspected some of the bees he kept in a glass container in the house, as he brought some tea. It's a very relaxing activity. They're such noble creatures. And the honey, well, I keep it right on the comb. Kane handed Naruto some tea which he took a sip, and found that the tea was delicious, they're dying off, you know. Without bees, mankind cannot exist. So, what is the middle whiner brother doing at my house? Kane asked surprising Naruto. How do you know I'm a whiner? I only gave you my first name, Naruto asked. I'm retired, not dead or senile. I still keep up with the supernatural world. Obviously, I would have heard about the whiner with a special hatred for the pagan gods after what they did to your girlfriend. So, back to the question, Kane said, skipping the pleasantries. I came here looking for you, Naruto admitted, 
after he silenced the flare of anger at the mention of pagan gods. Why? Cain asks. Couple reasons. I wanted to meet my great X5 grandfather on my dad's side, but also because I need help and I couldn't exactly turn to my family, so I hope maybe you might be able to. Naruto admitted, surprising Kane. So, that means him and his brothers are all descended from mine and Colette's daughter. Kane thought before he studied him, he didn't like company, since he preferred to be left alone in solitude. He, though, had taken an interest in the Weiner boys, particularly Naruto. Naruto was a fierce hunter and formidable fighter, killing evil monsters without remorse, yet he could be considerate towards those supernatural creatures that deserved mercy. Hell, he even dated a couple of monsters. A vampire who abstained from human blood named Lenore for a few months, and after her, a kitsune by the name of Amy Pond when he was 18. Him and Amy even had a kid together. Well, they almost had a kid, had it not been for a certain pagan goddess. Lupa, the Roman wolf goddess, have developed a taste for kitsune flesh over the years and decided to make a meal of Amy and their unborn child. Naruto, in return, swore revenge, and three months later, slaughtered Lupa with a wooden stake coated in molten silver. Ever since then, Naruto had hated all pagan gods, seeing them in the same way his dad probably saw Azazel and Dean saw all monsters. He had killed a total of five other pagan deities since then. Four of those deities were Plutus, Anasi, Moloch, and Khufu. His fifth and most famous kill was definitely Artemis, Greek goddess of the moon. Somehow, Naruto had managed to trap the goddess, incapacitating her before taking her divine weapons and killing her with them. An impressive record, especially since he defeated one of the Greek pantheon's more powerful deities with tricky and deception. Maybe, let's find out. What sort of help are you looking for? Kane asked. So Naruto told him about the new abilities that he suspected was due to the yellow-eyed demon feeding him demon blood. Azazel, Kane muttered to himself, as that was the only prince of hell that would make sense. The other three prints were just doing whatever they wanted on earth with no obligation to hell. Making a decision, Kane got up and motioned for Naruto to follow him out behind his house. Stopping and turning around, he addressed his descendant. I've made my decision. I will help train you. However, Kane stopped and Naruto gave him his full attention. Before I agree to train you, you must swear me an oath. There is a demon by the name of Abaddon. She's the one who murdered my wife 150 years ago. When you leave here, I want you to kill her. And then, I want you to kill me. Do you want to die? Naruto asked in surprise. I've been alive for a long time, Naruto. I also know that I can't fight the mark forever. This training we do, it probably won't be immediately, but I will fall back under its influence eventually. I need you to promise me that you will kill me when that happens. Kane demanded and Naruto sighed, seeing as there was no other choice. Olay, I'll do it. Naruto agreed. Good, now get ready. Kane said before he punched Naruto so hard that blood flew from his and his head ed towards the ground. Because I don't pull my punches. I'd be insulted if you did, Naruto said as he punched him right back and they began their first training session. May 30, 2006, you've done well for yourself. Says Kane with a small measure of pride. He hadn't trained anyone since he finished training the last of the Knights of Hell over a thousand years. It felt good to once again have a student graduate his training. I have you to thank for that. Naruto thanked him as they stood apart from each other in Kane's living room. Kane's training program was hellish, pun intended. Naruto was only ever allowed to rest when it was time to sleep. Kane was easily the biggest slave driver of any of his old teachers, but then again, his old teachers had never really trained him seriously. But Naruto was grateful for it. Now, gotten used to his enhanced physiology and he had mastered his electrokinesis, pyrokinesis, demon exorcism, smiting, demon torture, immunity to certain demonic powers, and telekinesis, and was a better hunter and fighter now. Now, are you sure you want this? This mark carries a great burden, Kane warned. I made a promise to you. I keep my promises, grandfather. When you do fall back under the mark's influence and return to your old ways, or after I kill Abaddon, I will find you and end your life. But I can't do that without the mark or the blade, Naruto said. So be it, Kane said as they clasped their arms together, a red vein of power extending from the mark of Kane on Kane's arm, traveling up his arm and through his hand, into Naruto's right arm, and stopping near his elbow, before forming itself into the mark of Kane, as Kane copied his own mark onto Naruto. When it finished, 
Naruto felt a great surge of power within his own body. Now, the first blade, Kane said as he pulled out the old jawbone dagger, which was also indestructible. Naruto took it and felt the power between the blade and the mark. Kane's training had also consisted of knowing how to restrain himself from going too far where the mark was concerned. Naruto was confident that he could handle it. June 4, 2006 Hartford, South Dakota dressed in a dark gray v-neck t-shirt, black combat boots underneath dark blue jeans with a black belt, black fingerless leather gloves, and a black leather jacket was Naruto, searching in a barn. There had been a string of disappearances of women from chastity groups in this town, and it was the same amount every three years from the same town. Where there were virgins disappearing, there were probably pagan gods, as they love sacrificing, eating or fucking virgins. He ran a finger along the wall as he walked in to see a red-headed woman strapping some snarky young girl to a slaughter table. I'm sort of new to this, but, you know, a Roman deity burying people alive in a barn. Sort of pathetic, don't you think? She asked as she was strapped to the table. It only got pathetic when I started having to do it myself. Vesta said as she punched the woman before strapping her further. Because of that hippie from Bethlehem, before him, they practically threw virgins at me. And now. They let your fire go out. They forgot about you. Yeah, I know. Sucks to be Lindsay Lohan, doesn't it? The woman mocked as she was punched again. Actually, I figured if you can't beat them, join them. That's right. Vesta said as she pulled out a knife, I adapted. Now I chew on the cut of prayer. Heck. I even got a sweater set. Well, this is all fascinating, but it's time for you to die, Naruto announced coldly as Vesta turned around as he fed his wrist telekinetically sending her flying through a wooden pillar. Naruto looked at the woman strapped to the table and telekinetically snapped the bindings on her wrists. Find the other women she kidnapped, I'll deal with her. Naruto said the woman as she undid her findings while he stalked closer to Vesta. Who do you think you are? I am a goddess of Rome. Vesta shouted as she conjured a ball of blue fire in each hand. Goddess of a dead empire that hasn't worshipped you in 17 centuries, Naruto quipped as Vesta angrily threw the blue fireballs, each hitting Naruto and coating him in blue flames. She smirked and thought it was over but that quickly turned to shock when Naruto walked out of the flames, perfectly fine. Naruto dusted himself off, having subtly used his telekinesis as a shield to protect himself from her flames. Not bad. But I'm better. He raised his hand and sent a stream of blue flames Vesta's way, not that they could hurt her when they hit her. She rushed out of the flames unharmed and threw a punch at his face, but he merely caught her fist in his hand and held her there. She tried to punch him with her other hand, but he caught that one too, applying pressure as he broke her wrists, before head-butting her and disorienting her as she stumbled back. Naruto punched her in the face several times, before plunging his hand into her stomach and ripping out her liver, giving the pagan a taste of her own medicine as she cried out in pain. He finished her off by pulling the first blade out and stabbing her in the heart, her eyes and face erupting in blue flames for a moment before the fire went out as the Roman goddess died. Naruto wiped the blood off his blade and went to help the innocent women the pagan had kidnapped to use as food. June 15, 2006 Las Vegas The elevator opened up as Naruto examined the duffel bag full of money, which contained his winnings from tonight at the casino. He stepped through the door, he just happened to slip on a roulette ball that had been left in the elevator allowing an old rusty coin from medieval Japan to fall into his pocket. Naruto groaned in annoyance as he sat up and looked at the ball. Hum. How come there's a roulette ball on the floor here? Shrugging, he tossed it out of the elevator collected his money and went up to his five-star room. He walked into his room and threw his duffel bag underneath the bed, but stopped when he saw something on his shoulder. It was a very tiny old man with a wispy beard, sipping a cup of sake as he sat on Naruto's shoulder, chuckling creepily. What the hell? Naruto asked before he noticed something odd and felt his pockets before he realized that there was a rusty old Japanese coin in his pocket. Better see what this is. That wasn't there earlier. Naruto thought. He did a quick search of Japanese gods with the old man's description. It was Binbagami, the Japanese god of poverty and misery. Once he attaches to someone through them touching his cursed coin, he curses them with bad luck and never goes away until the individual dies or passes the curse to someone else. Well, in that case, Naruto thought before telekinetically summoned the coin to him. It stopped in front of his face and floated there. He then pulled out the first blade and chopped the coin in half. 
Naruto watched in sadistic satisfaction as the old pagan bastard gained a look of horror on his face, before his spirit caught on fire and the old pagan god screamed in pain, not that anyone but Naruto could hear him, as the god was burned until nothing remained. Easiest pagan kill ever. Naruto thought at how easy it had been to kill the god before he put the first blade away. There was a knock on his door and Naruto smiled as he guessed who it was. Hey, Naruto. Said Bella Talbot as she walked in, dressed in a trench coat and black heels. Bella was a thief, who acquired occult objects and then sold them to the highest bidder. She had been in town to deliver something to her client, but ran into Nemesis, Greek goddess of retribution, revenge and balance. Coincidentally, Naruto had been in town hunting down Nemesis. He arrived where Nemesis was holding Bella in time to hear how Nemesis mocked Bella's actions in selling her soul to get her family killed because her father Yu ally abused and raped her as a young girl while her mother watched. Nemesis didn't get far into making a meal out of her, as Naruto killed her before setting Bella free. That was two days ago. They had spent the last few days talking and partying, as a way of repaying him for saving her life, plus he had also heard about her past, which under normal circumstances, Bella would never talk about. Naruto shuts the door to his room behind him. I wasn't sure you were planning to show up. She just smiles at him as she slowly walks closer, taking hold of the belt on her coat as she comes up in front of him. Well, I'm full of surprises. She opens and takes off her coat, revealing that she's wearing a black lacy slip. He looks down at her and she puts her hand on his cheek, her eyes on his. Ever since you saved me, I haven't been able to stop thinking about you, she said. She leans in and s him. He responds and puts his hand on her arm. They breath in with the and she puts her other hand on his waist. Why don't we get you out of those clothes? Bella said before she helped him out of his shirt, revealing his muscular and abs, and ing her liking what she saw. She was gonna have fun tonight as she thanked Naruto for saving her. July 30, 2006 Palm Beach, Florida crawling along the beach in the dead of night, drenching the sand around him with his blood, was Apollo, Greek god of the sun and archery. He had four of Artemis's divine arrows inside his body. Two in each shoulder, and one in each knee. He was also missing a hand. He tried desperately to crawl away as Naruto stuck the bow and arrows back in the pocket dimension he kept all of his weapons in as he pulled out Artemis's divine dagger, cruelly planning to use the knife of Apollo's sister to kill him. You know, I was expecting at least a little bit of a challenge from you. You know, considering that your sister at least gave me a hard time. Naruto cruelly taunted. Why you murderer? My sister was a sweet girl. Why'd you kill her? Apollo shouted at him while in pain as Naruto knelt next to him. Why? She's a pagan god. That's the only the reason I need. You pagans look down on humans, seeing us as only food, subjects, entertainment or sacrifices to boost our powers, and some of you just straight up murder or torture us humans for your own amusement. You're all vile monsters and this, Naruto gestured to Apollo's wounded form as just retribution that's been a long time coming for your filthy kind. Why you monster? Fael the power of the sun. Apollo said as his form shone as harshly as the sun Naruto wasn't gonna have it and closed his eyes, while grabbing Apollo's face with both hands, before shoving his fingers into his eye sockets, destroying his eyes and causing the harsh light to down as Apollo screamed in pain. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. You gave me the slip last week with that little trick of yours. I wasn't about to let that happen again. Naruto mocked as he gripped Artemis's blade but then got a call on his phone. He answered the phone, bad time, Bobby. I'm in the middle of offing the other half of the sun, moon archer duo of the Greek pantheon. Well, piss on that. Your family needs you, Bobby said. Wait, what are you talking about? Naruto said. Your brothers and your old man found the thing that killed your mom, and what killed Sam's girlfriend. I know you got beef with every one of those pagan fuckers for what the wolf one took from you, but your dad has been captured and those two knucklehead brothers of yours need help. Bobby said on the other end, shocking Naruto. Wait. Hold on, I know I was overseas for the last nine months, but how much did I miss? Sam's hunting again. And what's this about his girlfriend Jessica? Naruto asked, the cover story for the last nine months being that he was hunting overseas, which he did do for a few weeks over in Britain. He had called Bobby up a few days ago and left a message to let him know he was back. So, Bobby caught him up on what's been going on, how the yellow-eyed demon killed Sam's girlfriend, and he and Dean had been hunting for the thing ever since. 
even mentioned that they found the demon killing gun created by Samuel Colt, and that's why they were going after Yellow Eyes. Okay, tell me where they are. I'll finish up here and head there immediately, Naruto said as Bobby gave him their location. Thanks, Bobby. Naruto said as he hung up. Well Sun God, I would like to keep torturing you a bit more, but my family needs me, so we are gonna have to cut this short. Say hi to your sister for me. Naruto said as he stabbed Apollo in the with Artemis's knife, killing him, releasing an explosion of light as he died. He got up and walked away after burning the body with his blue flames. August 1, 2006 Abandoned House Jefferson City, Missouri. Azazel had just revealed he was possessing John and telekinetically holding Sam and Dean against the wall. Sam had dropped the colt and Azazel picked it up, inspecting the one gun that could kill him. What a pain in the ass this thing's been, he commented. It's you, isn't it? We've been looking for you for a long time, Sam said as he was held against the wall. Well, you found me, Azazel stated. But the holy water? Sam asked, not understanding why it didn't work, since he was a demon. Azazel found it to be amusing as he said, I'm not your average demon, kiddo. You think something like that works on something like me? Sam tries to fight the force that has him pinned to the wall, but fails. I'm gonna kill you, Sam said in anger, as he wanted to make the demon pay for killing his mother and his girlfriend. Oh, that'd be a neat trick. In fact, Azazel said amusedly as he put the gun down on a table, here. Make the gun float to you there, psychic boy. Sam looks at the gun but nothing happens. Well, this is fun. Azazel said as he walks closer to Dean, I could have killed you a hundred times today, but this. Size, this is worth the wait. Dean struggles, but is still pinned to the wall. Azazel looks over at him. Your dad, he's in here with me. Trapped inside his own meat suit. He says, hi, by the way. He's gonna tear you apart. He's gonna taste the iron in your blood. Let him go or I swear to God, Dean says angrily but Azazel interrupts. What? What are you and God gonna do? You see, as far as I'm concerned, this is justice. Azazel walks up to Dean, you know that little exorcism of yours? That was my daughter. Who, Meg? Dean asked. The one in the alley. That was my boy. You understand, Azazel said. You've got to be kidding me. Dean scoffed. What? You're the only one that can have a family. You destroyed my children. How would you feel if I killed your family? Azazel asks before he gained a look of mock realization. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I did. Still, two wrongs don't make a right. You son of a. Dean cursed. I want to know why. Why'd you do it? Sam asked as he wanted to know why his mother and the girl he was going to propose to were murdered. Azazel turns to Sam asking. You mean why did I kill mommy and pretty, little Jess? Yeah. Sam confirmed. Azazel turned back to Dean and addresses him, you know, I never told you this, but Sam was going to ask her to marry him. Been shopping for rings and everything. Azazel turned to Sam. You want to know why? Because they got in the way. Oh what? Sam asked. My plans for you, Sammy, you, Nate, and all the children like you, Azazel said gleefully. Listen. You mind just getting this over with, huh? Cuz I really can't stand the monologuing. Dean mocked, acting tough despite the fact he couldn't move. Funny, but that's all part of your MO, isn't it? Masks all that nasty pain, masks the truth. Azazel says as he gets in Dean's face. Oh, yeah? What's that? Dean asked. You know, you fight and you fight for this family, but the truth is they don't need you. Not like you need them. Sam. He's always been John's favorite. Naruto's off hunting pagan gods down by himself. And even when him and John fight, that's more concern than he's ever shown you. Azazel cruelly said as he twists the proverbial knife in Dean's gut. I bet you're real proud of your kids, too, huh? Oh wait, I forgot. I wasted him. Dean said as he insulted Azazel, trying to not let it get to him. Dean just smiles at him and John looks at Dean. He steps back and puts his head down. When he looks back up Dean suddenly yells in pain. Dean. No. Sam says as Dean starts to bleed heavily from his. Sam starts to struggle against the force pinning him. Dad. Dad, don't you let it kill me. Dean pleaded with some hope his dad could overpower the demon. Azazel just smiles evilly. Dean. No. 
Sam shouts as he helplessly watches his brother be slowly killed. The blood was now flowing out of Dean's. Sam struggles as hard as he can to break free. Dad, please. Dean pleads with his dad before he passes out. Dean. Sam shouts in worry, when the door bursts open. Naruto quickly assesses the situation, seeing Dean bleeding, Sam telekinetically restrained, and his dad had Azazel's yellow eyes. Well, looks like the gang's all here. Azazel said with a tone that didn't feel right coming from John. Azazel tried to telekinetically push Naruto against the wall but it wasn't working. Confused, he did it again with a gesture of his hand but he still couldn't push Naruto. Naruto got inside of Azazel's guard and punched him hard in the stomach, before delivering a haymaker to his dad's face, holding back as much as he could so he didn't accidentally kill his dad. He tried to punch Azazel in the face again, but the demon caught the punch, his own superior strength overpowering Naruto's superhuman strength. Azazel slowly crushed Naruto's hand in his own. You may be immune to my mental powers, champ, but I'm still stronger than you. Azazel gloated as he forced Naruto to one knee from the pain he was causing him. Naruto growled out, can you muscles overpower this? Naruto gripped Azazel's arm and delivered a powerful electric shock to the Prince of Hell, causing him to grit in pain. His grip on Naruto slackened enough that Naruto pulled his arm out of the stronger demon's grip, and kicked him in the, causing him to stumble back as Naruto then used telekinesis to hold Azazel against the wall. This caused Azazel's own telekinetic hold on Sam and Dean to break as they fall to the ground. Naruto also summoned the colt to his hands, holding it in his right hand and he pointed it at Azazel's head. Nate, Sam breathed as he looked at his slightly older twin. Hey, Sammy, Naruto turned to him with a smile. He got serious and said, I'm sorry I wasn't here nine months ago when you got back into hunting. I'd love to catch up but right now, Dean needs help. I left a first aid kit by the door. Go patch him up, will you? He is still bleeding. Sam looked hesitant to leave his brother alone with the demon, but he knows Dean needs help. He slowly moves to the door that Naruto mentioned while watching Azazel, out of fear he was going to break free. With every step, he became a little more confident that the demon wasn't going to break free. He got to the door and saw the first aid kit that his brother mentioned. He got it and moved next to Dean. Dean? Dean, hey? Oh God. You've lost a lot of blood. Sam says as he sees that Dean lost a lot of it. Where's dad? Dean asked as he slowly came to. He's still possessed. Nate's with him. Sam as he tore Dean's shirt open and got the first aid supplies out. Wait, Nate's here? Dean asked before he groaned in pain. Just lay still. You're still bleeding. Sam said as he started to patch him up. While Sam did that, Naruto untrained the gun on Azazel and held it at his side, while he walked closer until they were a foot apart. Well, it's been 22 and a one half years since I last saw you. Naruto commented. I've been waiting for this for a long time, Azazel. Well, aren't you a smart cookie? Azazel commented at the mention of his name. I'm curious, who blabbed about me? Nobody important. I tortured some poor demons for info on demons with yellow eyes. Didn't take too long for them to give up that only the princes of hell have yellow eyes. They told me what Ramil, Dagon and Asmodeus were up to last they heard, so that only left you. The last general and current ruler of hell, Azazel. Naruto said. Technically, Kane had told him but he didn't need to know that. Someone's been doing their summer reading. Azazel said cheeringly and manically. You're right, of course. Those other three less heathens gave up on hell, but I alone remained loyal. You also mentioned 22 years since you last saw me, which would mean. I remember that night well. Your eyes, you feeding me and Sam your demon blood, mom trying to stop you, and you killing her. I remember everything. Naruto growled out. And I have been waiting for a long time to get a chance to kill you, bastard. One problem with that. You kill me, you kill daddy, Azazel reminded. The thing is, Azazel, Naruto said as he calmly placed the colt on the table confusing the other three occupants in the room, I don't need the colt to kill you. Naruto extended his hand forward in a claw shape, and a red glow could be seen coming from Azazel's skeleton. He grit his teeth in pain for the first 40 seconds, before the pain became too much and he yelled in pain. Arrrrghhh, he yelled as Naruto used his demon torture ability to cause him extreme levels of pain to the point that Azazel felt like he was being slowly smited by an archangel over and over and over again. 
Naruto let up and Azazel gasped for breath. Leave my father's body, Azazel, or I'll smite you both. Make me. He taunted. All right then. Count of three. One, point two, three, on three, Naruto prepared to smite Azazel, which would kill his dad, but he knew John would rather die than let the thing that killed mom get away. But before he could smite Azazel, John shouted in pain as Azazel's black smoke form exited John and Azazel slipped through the cracks in the floor, disappearing. John looks at Naruto accusingly. Sup dad? Naruto greeted, as if he hadn't just forced a prince of hell out of his dad's body. In the Impala Sam was driving with John sitting in the passenger seat. Dean was in the back seat. John gasps in pain. Dean is just slumped in the back seat. Naruto was driving behind them. Look. Just hold on. All right. The hospital's only 10 minutes away. Sam said. John was on the phone with Naruto. I'm surprised at you, son. Why didn't you kill it? I thought we always saw eye to eye on this. Killing this demon comes first, before me, before everything. Sam looks in the rear view mirror at Dean. Yeah. Well I didn't want to kill my father. Be pissed at me all you want but do it after Dean's not in critical condition. Naruto said. Look. Not all hope is lost. Sam said. Playing the mediator. We've still got the colt. We still have two bullets left. We just have to start over. All right. I mean. We already found the demon. An 18 wheeler suddenly slams into the passenger side of the Impala at full speed driving it sideways in front of it. The driver of the semi was sitting behind the wheel. His eyes are black. Dean, Sam, and John were all unconscious in the car. Blood all over them. The demon possessing the truck driver got out and ripped the driver door of the hinges, only to see Sam pointing the colt at the demon. Back. Or I'll kill you, I swear to God, Sam vowed. You won't. You're saving those bullet for someone else, the demon Eile said. Before they could do anything, Naruto was behind the demon, gripping him by the throat and holding him up in the air. Nobody hurts my brothers and lives, Naruto growled as he smited the demon, the demon's eyes and emitting red light as Naruto killed it, before snapping the host body's neck and throwing to the ground. He pulled out his phone and called 911 to get an ambulance out to their location, he would not lose any more family. Sam was driving with John sitting in the passenger seat. Dean was in the back seat. John gasps in pain. Dean is just slumped in the back seat. Naruto was driving behind them. Look. Just hold on. All right. The hospital's only 10 minutes away. Sam said. John was on the phone with Naruto. I'm surprised at you, son. Why didn't you kill it? I thought we always saw eye to eye on this. Killing this demon comes first, before me, before everything. Sam looks in the rear view mirror at Dean. Yeah. Well I didn't want to kill my father. Be pissed at me all you want but do it after Dean's not in critical condition, Naruto said. Look, not all hope is lost, Sam said, playing the mediator, we've still got the colt. We still have two bullets left. We just have to start over, all right? I mean, we already found the demon. An 18-wheeler suddenly slams into the passenger side of the Impala at full speed, driving it sideways in front of it. The driver of the semi is sitting behind the wheel, his eyes are black. Dean, Sam, and John are all unconscious in the car, blood all over them. The demon possessing the truck driver got out and ripped the driver door of the hinges, only to see Sam pointing the colt at the demon. Back. Or I'll kill you, I swear to God, Sam vowed. You won't. You're saving that bullet for someone else, the demon Eile said. Before they could do anything, Naruto was behind the demon, gripping him by the throat and holding him up in the air. Nobody hurts my brothers and lives, Naruto growled as he smited the demon, the demon's eyes and emitting red light as Naruto killed it, before snapping the host body's neck and throwing to the ground. He pulled out his phone and called 911 to get an ambulance out to their location, he would not lose any more family. Now it didn't take long for the ambulance to get to their location. A rescue helicopter descended to the site, and Sam, John, and Dean were being loaded onto stretchers. John and Dean were still unconscious, Sam though, was awake. Significant passenger side intrusion. Unresponsive. BP is 180 over 60, heart rate 95, 95. One of the paramedics said. Tell me if they're okay. Sam frantically asked from his stretcher. You have to stay still. One of the paramedics urged him. Are they even alive? Sam frantically asked. 
Sam, just take it easy. I'm sure Dad and Dean will be fine. Naruto shouted at him to try to assure his bro they would be alright. Next day in a hospital room, Dean sat up, worked his jaw, getting out of bed. He was wearing hospital clothes, and nothing else. He walked into the hallway. Sam? Nate? Dad? Anybody? Dean asked aloud, though he got no response. Dean went down the stairs to the front of the hospital and found a nurse's station, with a nurse currently posted there, so he approached the desk. Excuse me. Hi. I, uh, I think I was in a car accident, my dad and my brother, I just need to find them. He asks but the nurse was unresponsive, busy with whatever she was working on. He snapped his fingers in an attempt to get her attention but to no avail. Dean headed back upstairs in a panic, and when he returned to the room he walked out of, he was greeted with the sight of his own body on the bed, all tubed up and dying. Still reeling from the shock of seeing his unconscious body, Dean turned, relieved as Sam and Naruto entered the room. Both stopped at the door and stare at Dean's body. Sammy. Nate. You two look good. Considering. Dean trails off when he realizes they can't hear him. Sam is still staring at him as he mutters an oh, no. While Naruto was angry with himself, powerless to help Dean as he doesn't have the power to heal others. Guys, come on. Tell me you can hear me. Dean yells at them, but they couldn't hear him. How's dad? Is he okay? Come on, Sammy, you're the psychic. Give me some ghost whispering or something. Your father's awake, the doctor said in the doorway, causing both living brothers to turn to him, you two can go see him if you like. While Dean is thanking God, Sam questioned the doctor, Doc, what about our brother? Well, he sustained serious injury, blood loss, contusions to his liver and kidney. But it's the head trauma I'm worried about. There's early signs of cerebral edema. The doc explained. What can be done to help him? Naruto questioned with his arms crossed. Well, we won't know his full condition until he wakes up. If he wakes up, the doctor said, the use of the word, if, shattering the temporary relief Sam felt. If. Sam demands and Naruto looks at the doctor. I have to be honest, the doctor explained while Dean's spirit cussed at him, most people with this degree of injury wouldn't have survived this long. He's fighting very hard. But you boys need to have realistic expectations. In John's room John was lying in a hospital bed, his arm in a sling. Awkwardly one-handed, he pulled a card out of his wallet. Here. Give them my insurance. John told Sam. Sam took the card John gives him, smiling as he reads it. Elroy McGillicuddy? Sam read, Naruto leaning in and chuckling when he read it. And his three loving sons. So, what else did the doctor say about Dean? John asked. Nothing good. Naruto said as he leaned up against a wall. Look. The doctors probably can't help him, so we'll have to. I got a few hoodoo priests that owe me some favors. I'll have them come and lay some mojo on him. But it'll be at least a day before they get here. John lies back as he thinks about something before asking, where's the colt? Sam was incredulous as he demands of his father, your son is dying, and you're worried about the colt? We're hunting this demon and maybe it's hunting us too. That gun may be our only card. John said, Naruto not saying anything, since he was not sure he could really tell them about the first blade, because that would open up the can about Cain, Knights of Hell, and Mark of Cain thing that he wasn't sure he could trust them with the secret yet. It's in the trunk. They dragged the car to a yard off of I-83, Sam said. All right. You've got to clean out that trunk before some junk man sees what's inside, John said without missing a beat. Sam sighed and said, I already called Bobby. He's like an hour out, he's gonna tow the Impala back to his place. All right. You two go meet up with Bobby, you get that colt, and you bring it back to me. And you watch out for hospital security. John requested, commanded his sons. I think I've got it covered. Sam reassured him as he could easily sneak it past security. John gave Naruto a piece of paper before they leave. Hey. Here. I made a list of things I need. Have Bobby pick them up for me. Naruto reads it aloud, Acacia? Oil of Abramelin? What do you need this for? Protection. John said Naruto raising his eyebrow in disbelief as he knew some of these ingredients were for summoning demons. Before they leave, Sam asked his dad, Hey, dad? You know, the demon, he said he had plans for me and children like me. Do you have any idea what he meant by that? No, I don't. John said, although he did know, 
and he wasn't telling Sam. Sam and Naruto leave, shutting the door to reveal Dean, who has been leaning behind it, glaring at his dad as he knew John was hiding something. Junkyard Sam and Naruto look down at the mangled car. Bobby was there as well. Oh man, Dean is gonna be pissed. Sam notes, no kidding. This used to be dad's before he passed it on to Dean. I remember Dean was still very attached to this car when I left for a year. Naruto noted. Look, boys. This. This just ain't worth a tow. I say we empty the trunk, sell the rest for scrap, Bobby said. No Dean would kill me if we did that. When he gets better he's gonna want to fix this. Sam insisted as he pulled out his mangled computer. There's nothing to fix. The frame's a pretzel, and the engine's ruin. There's barely any parts worth salvaging. Bobby argued back as Naruto took a closer look at the window frame that was caved in. He reached in and put his palm on the underside of the bent in window frame. Listen to me, Bobby. If there's only one working part, that's enough. We're not just going to give up on. Sam said only to trail off before he mentioned anything about giving up on Dean. Okay. You got it. Bobby said quietly. They then heard Naruto pop the window frame back in with pure strength. Holy shit. Bobby said in surprise as he was not expecting that. It's not completely unsalvageable. It'll need a new, well, everything up front, but the frame won't be too much of an issue. I'll cover the cost, Naruto said. Nate. How did you do that? And what was that thing you did with the demon last night? Sam asked, as first he sees his older brother killing a demon and now this. You're not the only one who's special, Sammy. Naruto said with a wink. Sam felt dumb for a moment because after thinking about it, he did remember the demon sort of mentioning that. Nate, Sam pressed, but Nate did not want to have this conversation right now. Look bro. Let's save that conversation for when Dean and Dad are all better, okay. I prefer only explaining this sort of thing once. Naruto said with smile as he placed his hand Sam's shoulder in a comforting way. He knew he needed to come clean about some of the things he knew and what he had been up to, but that wasn't something he wanted to repeat more than once. Hey Bobby, before I forget, Dad asked for you to get this stuff for him. Naruto handed over the list. Bobby looked at it, frowning. What's John want with this? He asked protection from the demon. Bobby gives Sam a look when he tells him that there's something wrong. What? Sam asks. Oh, nothing, it's just, uh, Bobby said. What? That some of those ingredients are used for summoning demons. Naruto quipped but with the look Bobby was giving him, Naruto knew he was on the money. Bobby? What's going on? Sam asks. Everything on this list is for summoning a demon, Bobby explained. John's room afternoon Sam stalked into the room with a duffel bag, Naruto following close behind, checking his phone to see that the hoodoo priest was on his way but wouldn't get here until tomorrow morning. Dean was there at the door and tried to talk with one of them. Sammy. Nate. Tell me one of you can friggin' hear me. There's something in the hospital. Now, you've got to bring me back and we've got to hunt this thing. Guys. Dean said but neither of them could hear him for obvious reasons. You're quiet. John observed, wondering what was wrong. Sam turned fuming, and hurls the bag onto the bed with a crash. Did you think we wouldn't figure it out? Sam asked in frustration. What are you talking about? John said. That stuff from Bobby. You don't use it to ward off a demon, you use it to summon one. Naruto pointed out, eyeing his dad, wondering what the hell he was up to. You're planning on bringing the demon here, aren't you? Having some stupid macho showdown? Sam accused him. I have a plan, Sam. John argued. That's exactly my point. Dean is dying, and you have a plan. You know what? You care more about killing this demon than you do saving your own son, Sam accused. No, 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 guys, don't do this. Dean said to himself as he really didn't want them doing this right now. Do not tell me how I feel. I am doing this for Dean. John argued back. How? How is revenge going to help him? You're not thinking about anybody but yourself. It's the same selfish obsession. Sam argued back. Come on guys, don't do this. Dean yelled but he couldn't get their attention. You know, it's funny, I thought it was your obsession too. This demon killed your mother, killed your girlfriend. You begged me to be part of this hunt. Now if Nate had killed that damn thing when he had the chance, none of this would have happened. John argued. Don't try to guilt me. 
It was possessing you, Dad. I would have killed you along with it. I'm not interested in losing any more family. Nate said unapologetically, starting to get annoyed with this damn arguing when there was something more important to focus on. Yeah, and your brother would be awake right now, John said. Shut up, all of you, Dean said as he too was getting tired of this. Go to hell, Dad. Sam said to John, furious because he still believed his dad was only focused killing Azazel. Naruto turned his back to them. I should have never taken you along in the first place. I knew it was a mistake. I knew I was wrong, John said but Naruto finally had enough. Shut up. He shouted in a rage as he grabbed a glass of nearby water and threw it to the ground, crashing to the floor. Sam and John look at each other, the momentary shock causing them to stop arguing. Dean is stunned as well. You both should be ashamed of yourselves. Our brother is barely holding on to his life and you both have the nerve to have your little pissing match right now, when you should be more concerned about how we are going to save him. Now. I have a hoodoo priest that's on the way here but he won't get here till tomorrow morning. We just need to hold out. Naruto said though grit teeth. At that moment, Dean crumples in pain, his whole form faring. Nurses and doctors were heard running by in the hallway. Something's going on out there. John realized. Naruto and Sam leave the room to go see what's wrong. Dean's room monitors are beeping, a doctor and some nurses are surrounding Dean, attempting to resuscitate him. All clear. One says as they prepare to use the shock him. No, Sam muttered by doorway tears in his eyes. Naruto sees through the doorway and grits his teeth and clenches his hand in frustration, as he's currently useless. Dean came up slowly behind them. He saw a ghostly figure floating over the body lying in the bed. You get the hell away from me. Dean warned as he moved toward the bed. I said get back. Dean shouts. Sam blinks, looking confused, as if he's heard something. Naruto also heard it as well. Dean grabbed for the spirit. He latched on momentarily before it hurls him back and then soared out of the room. The beeping of the monitors slowed down. The room began to quiet. We have a pulse. We're back into sinus rhythm, the nurse said. Dean ran into the hallway, looking for the spirit but it had vanished. Both Sam and Naruto sigh in relief and back up into the hallway, watching from there. Dean came back, standing by him. Boiler room nighttime John pushed the door open and entered, carrying the duffel bag with the colt and the stuff to summon demons. He walked through a dark and dripping hallway to a clear space, placing the bag down. He pulled out a box of white chalk and started drawing a large symbol on the floor. Dean's room Sam returned to Dean's room carrying the journal. He sat on the edge of Dean's bed. Hey. So dad wasn't in his room. Nate's gone to go track him down, Sam said. Where is he? Dean asked, but Sam didn't hear his question because he wasn't using the board to talk with spirits. But I got Dad's journal, so who knows? Maybe there's something here. Sam said as he flipped open the journal and looked through it, glancing up at Dean's unconscious form occasionally. Dean came to stand behind him. Thanks for not giving up on me, Sammy, Dean said in gratitude. Sam turned to a page that details Reapers. Dean leaned over and read something about them. His eyes go wide when he finished. Son of A. He muttered, before turning around and stalking down the hallway until he sees Tessa sitting on the edge of the bed in her room. She's dressed differently more businesslike. Hi, Dean. She greeted him, no longer keeping up the act of a recently deceased patient in order to get close to him. You know, you read the most interesting things. For example, did you know that reapers can alter human perception? He asked her, I sure didn't. Basically they can make themselves appear however they want. Like, say, uh, a pretty girl. You are much prettier than the last reaper I met. I was wondering when you would figure it out, Tessa said. I should have known. That whole, accepting fate, rap of yours is far too laid back for a dead chick. Dean said to her, but the mother, and the body, I'm still trying to figure that one out. It's my sandbox. I can make you see whatever I want, she told him. What, is this like a turn on for you? What, toying with me? He asked, because she made it sound like that. You didn't give me much choice. You saw my true form and you flipped out. Kinda hurts a girl's feelings. This was the only way I could get you to talk to me. She said, actually sounding kinda hurt, but not that bad. Okay, fine. We're talking. What the hell do you want to talk about? Dean demanded of her. How death is nothing to fear. Tessa said as she stood up and touched his cheek, 
It's your time to go, Dean, and you're living on borrowed time already. Boiler room John had finished the chalk symbol, with several candles and a black bowl placed around it. He was incanting the spell to summon Azazel in Latin. He slid a knife across his palm, drawing blood and dripping it on the bowl. He then lit a match and dropped it in. The sand in the bowl flares and goes out quickly. John stood up, looking around. A hand grabbed his shoulder, turning him around. What the hell are you doing down here, buddy? The guy said. I can explain. John said. Yeah? You're going to explain to security. Come on. You follow me. The man said and turned around. Hey, John said, pulling the colt and ing it, the dude turning around, how stupid do you think I am? You really want an honest answer to that? Azazel asked smugly, eyes glowing yellow, dropping the pretense. Two possessed men in lab coat stock by and take positions behind John. You conjuring me, John. I'm surprised. I took you for a lot of things, but suicidally reckless wasn't one of them. I could always shoot you. John pointed out. You could always miss, Azazel laughs as he continues, and you've only got a couple more tries, don't acha? Did you really think you could trap me? Oh, I don't want to trap you. John said as he lowered the gun, I want to make a deal. Azazel looks on, intrigued by this development. Meanwhile Naruto was hiding behind a pillar, shock on his face as he finally understood what his dad was planning. Empty room Dean was staring out a dark window. Look, I'm sure you've heard this before, but. You've gotta make an exception, you've gotta cut me a break. Dean pleaded. Stage 3. Bargaining. Tessa said, as she was used to this. Dean turned to her. I'm serious. My family's in danger. See, we're kind of in the middle of this, um, war, and they need me. Dean said. The fight's over. Tessa said comfortingly to him. No, it isn't. He denied. It is for you. Dean. You're not the first soldier I've plucked from the field. They all feel the same. They can't leave. Victory hangs in the balance. But they're wrong. The battle goes on without them, she explained. My brother. He could die without me. Dean said. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. Nothing you can do about it. It's an honorable death. A warrior's death. Tessa said. I think I'll pass on the 72 virgins, thanks. I'm not that into prude chicks anyway, Dean said. That's funny. You're very cute, she said to him. There's no such thing as an honorable death. My corpse is going to rot in the ground and my family is going to die. No I'm not going with you, I don't care what you do. Dean argued with her. Well, like you said, there's always a choice. I can't make you come with me. But you're not getting back in your body. And that's just facts. So yes, you can stay. You'll stay here for years. Disembodied, scared, and over the decades it'll probably drive you mad. Maybe you'll even get violent. She explained to him. What are you saying? Dean asked with dread. Dean. How do you think angry spirits are born? She asked him, they can't let go and they can't move on. And you're about to become one. The same thing you hunt. Back in the boiler room, it's very unseemly, making deals with devils. How do I know this isn't just another trick? Azazel mentioned. It's no trick. I will give you the colt and the bullets, but you've got to help Dean. You've got to bring him back. John said. This caused Azazel to smile. Why, John, you're a sentimentalist. If only your boys knew how much their daddy loved them. Azazel said in a mocking way. Naruto behind the corner had his head down with shadows covering his eyes, emotions boiling within him. He knew his dad cared about them, even though he had a much harder time showing it after mom died. It's a good trade. You care a hell of a lot more about this gun than you do Dean. John pointed out. Don't be so sure. He killed some people very special to me. Azazel said in anger, but quickly went back to his calm demeanor. But still, you're right, he isn't much of a threat. And neither is little Sammy. Though I can't say the same about good, O.L. Nate. John lowered his head, raising his eyes. Azazel continued, you know the truth, right? About Sammy, Nate, and the other children. Yeah. I've known for a few years now. John said. Naruto raised his head at that with widened. His dad had known about it the whole time. And here Naruto was thinking couldn't go to him. But really, he couldn't. Even if John knew and was okay with it, Naruto couldn't have gone to him because John would not have been able to help him. No, Naruto didn't regret going to Kane for help, but he did regret not letting John know he was alright. 
But Sam doesn't, does he? You've been playing dumb. Azazel told him and John could not deny it. Can you bring Dean back? Yes or no? John ground out. No but I know someone who can. It's not a problem. Azazel said, as he could just possess the Reaper talking to Dean right now. Good. John said before he added something. Before I give you the gun, I'm going to want to make sure that Dean's okay. With my own eyes. Oh, John, I'm offended. Don't you trust me? Azazel said with mock hurt. John shakes his head slowly, fine. So we have a deal. John pressed. No, John, not yet. You still need to sweeten the pot, Azazel said. With what? John asked. There's something else I want, as much as that gun. Maybe more. Azazel said as he walked closer. Since he was here, he might as well try to jump start the apocalypse by breaking the first seal. What is it? John pressed. The soul of a righteous man. Your soul, John. Azazel said and Naruto froze for a moment, his mind flashing back to one of Kane's lessons. Flashback it was nighttime out at Kane's house a few weeks before Naruto graduated from night boot camp. The two of them were sitting out on Kane's porch, enjoying the beautiful evening after almost 12 hours of brutal training. Naruto was pleased with himself, as during the first month of training, Kane would beat his ass so hard that he would have to carry Naruto inside after he was done with training for the day and heal him. Now, Naruto and him were almost evenly matched in skill. I'm curious about something. Naruto said as he took a moment from his meal. What is it? Kane asked. What was Azazel's plan with the special kids? Naruto asked. I just keep wondering what he was up to, and it doesn't make any sense. Because you don't have the whole picture. Kane said as he out his tea down. I don't know the whole story myself, but I know this. When Lucifer made the Knights of Hell, Lilith and the Princes, God locked him in a cage deep within hell. That cage has kept Lucifer imprisoned for thousands of years, but he seeks to break out of that cage and start the apocalypse. How would he escape? And wouldn't he have done it already? He's had. What, almost 10,000 years? Asked Naruto. If only it were that easy, Kane pointed out, any of the 66 of 600 seals need to be broken for Lucifer to be released. But there are two that must come to pass, the first and last seal. And it is written, that the first seal shall be broken when a righteous man sheds blood in hell. As he breaks, so shall it break. The final seal is, and it is written, that the first demon shall be the last seal. Aside from those two seals, any other 64 of the remaining seals will suffice. So, Lilith would have to somehow get topside and die at the end, but you mentioned she's also stuck in hell. But what about the first one? How come some crossroads demon hasn't nabbed one of these righteous souls already? Naruto asked. You'd think in all this time, one of those crafty bastards would have gotten lucky. Because somehow in all these years, not one soul that ever made a deal with a crossroads demon has been a righteous man. Kane explained. But there are ways of getting a righteous soul into hell. The demon in question would have to jump through a lot of hoops, but it can be done. Kane said and Naruto sat and thought about it. Flashback end that was what Azazel wanted more than the gun. He wanted to get an earlier start on the apocalypse. No way in hell. Naruto shouted mentally as he pulled out one of his pistols. He popped out from behind his corner drawing everyone's attention as he popped two bullets in Azazel, before putting one in each of the demons with him. Azazel noticed that there was a devil trap carved into the bullets Naruto had fired. Naruto dropped the gun before pulling out the first blade, causing Azazel's eyes to widen in legit fear, as he had not wanted to see that or anything about the father of murder ever again. Naruto leapt and pounced on one of the demons that were bound by the devil trap bullets, plunging the blade into its back, killing it. I accept the deal. John shouted to Azazel, causing Azazel to smile as he would still get what he wanted. John, for his part, did not want to lose the chance to restore Dean to life. Azazel left his host's body as Naruto slit the throat of the second demon with the first blade. By the time Naruto plunged the blade into Azazel's host, he had left the host body. Growling, Naruto turned on his father, holding the bloody blade of sharpened, indestructible bone in his hand. What were you thinking? Naruto demanded of him. I'm trying to save my son. Losing the colt is a small price to pay to restore Dean to life. John said. John knew that between the loss of his wife and the stress of dealing with monsters on a regular basis as well as his desire to avenge Mary at all costs, he often ended up neglecting his kids. He had to try to make things right. 
This seemed like the only way to save Dean. John knew about the Reapers and knew he didn't have long before Dean either chose to pass on, or stay and become one of the spirits that they hunted. I don't give a crap about losing the colt. I have the first blade, I can kill a Zazel whenever I want. Naruto pointed out, before he wiped the blood of the blade using the clothes on one of the hosts. Look dad, I love Dean too. We both would do anything for him. But, there are better ways of resurrecting him that don't involve selling your soul to a prince of hell. And it is written, that the first seal shall be broken when a righteous man sheds blood in hell. As he breaks, so shall it break. John muttered, causing Naruto to turn to him in shock. I shouldn't be surprised you know about that. But dad, your soul must fit the bill. Azazel wants you in hell, so he can torment you and break you, and in doing so, jumpstart the apocalypse. And you just sold your soul to the demon that wants above all else to make it happen. Naruto said as he pocketed the blade, he really shouldn't be surprised that John knew about Azazel's plans in Lucifer's cage. John devoted his life to killing Azazel after the demon killed Mary. It didn't shock him that much that John had devoured encyclopedias worth of knowledge in his hunt for demon, or that he came across information about the apocalypse or Lucifer. Give me some credit, son. I knew that going into this. But old yellow eyes ain't gonna get what he wants out of me. I won't break. John chastised and reassured Naruto. I just. I lost mom before I had a chance to know her. I don't want to lose you too dad. Naruto said in a rare show of vulnerability. Come, heir. John said as he opened his one good arm and father and son hugged each other. I'm so proud of the man you've become, champ. Even though I was hard on you, made you and the boys grow up too fast, and wasn't exactly father of the year, you didn't let it make you into bad person. You didn't become me. I know highway you couldn't come to me when your demon powers started appearing and why you had to find help elsewhere. You don't to feel guilty about it. You don't need me to take care of you anymore. I love you, son. I love you too, dad, Naruto choked out as he hugged his dad for what will be the final time, I don't want you go. Those stubborn idiot brothers of mine still need you. I know, and that's why you gotta keep them safe when I'm gone. John said as he patted his middle son on the back. Parents aren't supposed to outlive their children, Nate. It's okay. Empty room Dean was sitting on the bed in deep thought, Tessa behind him. She stroked his hair tenderly. It's time to put the pain behind you, she said serenely. And go where? He asked, to which she smiled. Sorry. I can't give away the big punchline. She told him, moment of truth. No changing your mind later. So what's it going to be? As he turned to look at her. The lights begin to fare and a familiar buzzing sound is heard. What are you doing that for? Dean asked. I'm not doing it. Tessa explained. They both turn to a vent in the floor and see black demon smoke pour out of it. You can't do this. Get away. Tessa shouted at the demon smoke. What's happening? Dean asks. Tessa screamed as the demon possessed her. She turned back to Dean, eyes glowing yellow. Today's your lucky day, kid. Azazel said while possessing her. He placed his hand on Dean's forehead and Dean blacks out. Dean's room Sam was still sitting on the bed as Dean gasped, waking suddenly and choking on the tube in his throat. Dean? Sam asked, happy that Dean was alive, but then realized her needed the doctors in here. He stuck his head out into the hallway, help. I need help. Daytime, I can't explain it. The edema's vanished. The internal contusions are healed. Your vitals are good. You have some kind of angel watching over you. The doctor said, completely stumped. Thanks, Doc, Dean said. The doctor left and Dean turned to Sam, so you said a reaper was after me? Yeah, Sam said. Dean was still confused and asked, how'd I ditch it? You got me. Dean, you really don't remember anything? Sam asked. No except this pit in my stomach. Sam, something's wrong, Dean said warningly. There was s knock at the door. Both turned to see John and Naruto in the doorway. How you feeling, dude? John asked as Naruto moved to sit in the chair next to Dean's bed. Fine, I guess. I'm alive, Dean said. That's good to hear, Naruto said as he placed a hand on Dean's shoulder. John concurred with that, as that was all that mattered. Sam was still angry from last time he spoke with John and demanded, Where were you two last night? Me and Nate had some things some affairs to set in order, John said. Well, that's specific. Sam said sarcastically. Come on, Sam. 
Dean pleaded with his brother not to fight, but Sam wasn't hearing it. Did you go after the demon? Sam asked. He didn't, Naruto answered for John. You know, why don't I believe that? Sam asked sarcastically. Damn it, Sam. Naruto raised his voice, getting their attention, before his tone changed to a more depressed and defeated one. Please, for once in your life, can you just, not pick a fight with dad? He's right, you know. Half the time we're fighting, I don't know what we're fighting about. We're just butting heads. John said. Sammy, I, I've made some mistakes. But I've always done the best I could. I just don't want to fight anymore, okay? Sam was getting concerned. Between his dad's pleading tone and Nate's defeated and almost depressed look, he knew something was wrong. Dad, are you alright? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a little tired. Hey, son, would you? Uh, would you mind getting me a cup of caffeine? John asked. He didn't want Sam to watch him die. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Sam said, deciding not to argue and walked out, still frowning. John looked after him sadly. What is it? Dean asked. Nate got up and walked out of the room so John and Dean could have their moment. You know, when you were a kid, I'd come home from a hunt, and after what I'd seen, I'd be, I'd be wrecked. And you, you'd come up to me and you, you'd put your hand on my shoulder and you'd look me in the eye and you'd. You'd say, it's okay, dad. John pauses for a moment before he continues, Dean, I'm sorry. You shouldn't have had to say that to me, I should have been saying that to you. I put, I put too much on your shoulders, I made you grow up too fast. You took care of Sammy and Nate, you took care of me. You did that, and you didn't complain, not once. I just want you to know that I am so proud of you. Dean asked, this really you talking? Yeah. Yeah, it's really me. John said, his voice cracking. Dean was suspicious and scared why his dad was saying this, why are you saying this stuff? John came closer and put a hand on Dean's shoulder. I want you to watch out for Sammy, okay? John said. Yeah, dad, you know I will. You're scaring me, Dean said. Don't be scared, Dean. John assured him. John leaned over and whispered something into Dean's ear. Dean pulled back in shock, processing. John left, and Dean stared after him. John entered an empty room and placed the colt on a small bed table. Okay. John said to Azazel, who was in the room and had a smug look on his face before he approached John. A few minutes later, Sam walked back to Dean's room, carrying a cup of coffee. He happened to glance into a room and saw John on the floor. Dropping the cup, Sam ran to John's side, kneeling over him and screaming for help. In an unknown location in the woods, the three Weiner brothers stood around a funeral pyre they had built for their father. Sam was near tears and fidgeting, Dean was staring into the flames silently. Naruto meanwhile, stared at the fire, blaming himself for allowing this to happen. Kane had told him that Naruto had the potential to learn biokinesis, and Naruto believed that with it, he could have been able to heal Dean so John would not have had to sacrifice himself. Problem is, he had to become true knight of hell aka die and let the mark turn him into a demon. Before he, before, did he say anything to you? About anything? Sam asked Dean. No nothing. Dean said, not even looking at Sam or Naruto, as he could not bear to bring up the thing John asked him to do. Not yet. Naruto meanwhile, believed that he wanted to wait a while yet before becoming a true knight of hell, and so he would have to go another route and get the spell books he had stolen from witches he had killed while on jobs during the three years Sammy was at college. While his twin had been in college, Naruto had branched off on his own, largely to service his own vendetta against the pagans without his father telling him what to do, but also because it was time branch out. There was one spell book in particular that he wanted to go grab. One week later Bobby's house Dean was underneath his car working on it. It was little more than a rusted frame but it looked considerably less crunched since Nate popped out all the dents. Sam approached Dean to talk. The three brothers had been staying at Bobby's while they mourned their father and recuperate from their loss against Azazel. How's the car coming along? Sam asked. Slow. Dean replied. Yeah. Need any help? Sam offered. What, you under a hood? I'll pass. Dean scoffed as he something underneath the hood. Need anything else, then? Sam asked as he wanted something to do to help distract him from the fact that his last words to John probably made John think that Sam hated him. Dean pushes himself out from under the car and stands, 
Stop it, Sam. Stop what? Sam asked. Stop asking if I need anything. Stop asking if I'm okay. Dean said in frustration, I'm okay. Really. I promise. All right. Dean, it's just. The three of us have been at Bobby's for over a week now and you haven't brought up dad once, Sam said. You know what? You're right. Come here. I'm gonna lay my head gently on your shoulder. Maybe we can cry, hug, and maybe even slow dance, Dean said sarcastically. Don't patronize me, Dean, dad is dead. The cult is gone, and it seems pretty damn likely that the demon is behind all of this, and you're acting like nothing happened, Sam said, as they currently did not have a plan, since Naruto wasn't talking about the first blade. What do you want me to say? Dean demanded. Say something, all right. Hell, say anything. Aren't you angry? Don't you want revenge? But all you do is sit out here all day long buried underneath this damn car, Sam said. Revenge, huh? Dean asked absent mindedly, but again, they did not currently have a plan. Yeah, Sam said. Sounds good. You got any leads on where the demon is? Making heads or tails of any of Dad's research? Because I sure ain't. But you know, if we do finally find it, oh. No, wait, like you said. The colt's gone. But I'm sure you figured out another way to kill it. We've got nothing, Sam. Nothing, okay. So you know the only thing I can do? Is I can work on the car. Dean said with finality as crouched by the car again, getting back to work. Well, we've got something, all right. Sam said as he pulled out a cell phone, it's what I came by here to tell you. This is one of dad's old phones. Took me a while, but I cracked his voicemail code. Listen to this. Sam handed the cell phone to Dean, who stood and took it reluctantly. John, it's Ellen. Again. Look, don't be stubborn, you know I can help you. Call me. The woman, Ellen, said. That message is four months old, Sam pointed out. Dad saved that chick's message for four months? Dean asked. Yeah, Sam said. Well, who's Ellen? Any mention of her in Dad's journal? Dean asked. No but I ran a trace on her phone number and I got an address. I figured we could check it out, Sam said. Ask Bobby if we can borrow one of his cars, and go find Nate while he's at it, Dean said as they went to go find him. In the shop inside the shop, Naruto was sitting down. On the glass table in front of him was a box that contained five small field mice. In his hands was a small leather-bound book that had a sigil in its cover. This was the Book of Spells. He had been sort of shocked to find a legitimate spell book on eBay a few years ago, and had bought it so it would not fall into the hands of some mentally deranged lunatic that would use it for who knows what, or an evil witch. He did not think he would ever get it out to learn from it. There were many spells in this book. It contained spells of all kinds, from offensive spells to scrying spells to some weird ones like summoning and binding a fairy to do your bidding. But what Naruto was really interested in were the dozen or so healing spells that this book contained. Currently, the book was open to a healing spell page, one that only required a verbal incantation. Naruto incanted the spell with the old Gaelic incantation that he had been practicing since yesterday. Lixar G.E. Stale knew, Naruto's incantation caused his eyes to glow blood red for a moment, before the wounds that he put on the mice fully healed. Naruto smiled at his success, as this spell could heal anything from small cuts to moderate lacerations, though he had not even gotten close to the spells that could heal massive internal injuries or save one from the brink of death. He was still way off from being that good, though the rate of his success with this spell told him that he could reach that level sooner than he originally anticipated with continued practice. He was about to go inside and studying another one when Bobby walked up. How's it coming? Bobby asked. Not bad. I've got this spell down pretty good and was gonna start on another more advanced one, Naruto said. The boys are planning to head out. They found one of your dad's old phones. He had a message from an old friend of his, Ellen. They were gonna go check it out, Bobby said. And I'm guessing you don't have a car that Dean likes, Naruto asked with a light smile. Bobby had a chuckle as well. The only one I got that works right now is an old beat-up van, and Dean didn't want that one because he said, I'd feel like a soccer mom. The two men shared a laugh which was always a much-needed break from the depressing atmosphere that seemed to envelope the family with John's death. All right, I'll go give those two a ride. I'm sort of curious about this woman myself, Naruto said as he got up and put the book back in his pocket dimension. When you planning on telling them? 
Bobby asked referring to the fact that Naruto had only told Bobby about the special powers he had and that John had given his soul up to save Dean. You know, I was going to tell everyone at once, but I remembered that Dean is less understanding about these things than Sammy, so I'm gonna tell Sam about the powers first, then I'll explain it to Dean, and then I'll tell them about Dad. I think it's better to break them in slow instead of slamming them with it all at once. They're barely handling his death as it, if they find out that Dad sold his soul to bring Dean back, Naruto trailed off. Just don't wait too long. You know how they can get. Bobby said. He loved these boys like they were his own kids, but sometimes, Sam and Dean were the two whiniest little s he had ever met. He also agreed that Sam would understand the whole situation a little better and should be told first. Don't I know it? Naruto said, as he too was more than aware of his brother's antics and often had to play peacemaker between the two, which was never fun. The next day in Naruto's car, the three whiners pulled up to the roadhouse saloon. Once they got out, they started looking around. Hello? Anybody here? Sam asked. Hey. You bring the, uh, Dean asked, referring to John's phone. Of course. Sam said. He tossed something to Dean, who caught it. They opened the door and walk inside. The saloon was rather quiet and empty except for a fly buzzing. A light bulb blew out as they walk further inside. They headed to the back and saw a man passed out on the pool table. Hey, buddy. Sam said to the guy, but he was fast asleep. I'm guessing that isn't Ellen. Let's look around. See if we can't find her. Naruto suggested. Sam went into a back room behind the bar, looking around, while Naruto checked the room connected to the pool table. Dean went down the steps, then paused as he felt the point of a gun touch his back. Oh God. Please let that be a rifle. Dean said to himself. He heard the gun. Behind him was a young and attractive blonde girl. No. I'm just real happy to see you. The girl said sarcastically, don't move. Dean had his hands up and said, not moving, copy that. You know, you should know something, miss. When you put a rifle on someone, you don't want to put it right against their back. Because it makes it real easy to do. He turned fluidly, grabbing the rifle out of her hand, ing it to release the bullet from the chamber, that. The girl punched him in the face and took back the rifle. Dean doubled over, clutching his nose. Guys. Need some help in here. Dean shouted. All of a sudden, the girl's feet were kicked out from underneath her, causing her to fall on her back. The gun she held was kicked away from her person and when she groaned and looked up, she saw Naruto, his all-black Beretta M9 trained on her, ready to put a bullet in her if she so much as twitched. A kid, Dean? Really? Naruto chastised his brother for some kid getting the drop on him. The back door opened to reveal Sam, both hands on his head, he walked into the room slowly. Sorry, Dean, Nate. I'm a little tied up, Sam said, nudging his head toward the woman holding a large caliber revolver to his head, likely Ellen. Sam, Dean, Nate, she questioned as she knew those names from somewhere, Weiner? Yeah. All three of them say at the same time, son of a, Ellen said. Mom, you know these guys? The blonde said from her position on the floor. Yeah. I think these are John Weiner's boys. Ellen said, laughing lightly as she lowered her gun from Sam's head. Hey, I'm Ellen. This is my daughter Joe. Naruto affords the same courtesy as he untrains his gun on Joe, before helping her up. A bit later Ellen handed Dean a small towel filled with ice to help with the swelling on his nose. Thanks. Dean said gratefully as he took it and started putting it on his nose, you called our dad, said you could help. Help with what? Well, the demon, of course. I heard he was closing in on it. Ellen said, surprising the three whiners as they all looked at each other. Dean turned back to her and asked, What, was there an article in the Demon Hunters Quarterly that I missed? I mean, who, who are you? How do you know about all this? Ellen held her hands up in defense and said, Hey, I just run a saloon. But hunters have been known to pass through now and again. Including your dad a long time ago. John was like family once. Oh yeah? How come he never mentioned you before? Dean scoffed being very insensitive, as the Ellen winced a little. Naruto glanced at Dean with, really? Look on his face. You'd have to ask him that. Ellen said. So why exactly do we need your help? Dean asked. Hey, don't do me any favors. Look, if you don't want my help, fine. Don't let the door smack your ass on the way out. 
but John wouldn't have sent you if. She stops, realizing something is wrong when she sees their downtrodden looks, he didn't send you. Dean looks down, then back at Sam and Naruto as Ellen asks, he's all right, isn't he? No, it was the demon. It got to him first, Naruto said quickly. I'm so sorry. Ellen apologized, knowing how much John loved his kids, even if he couldn't always show it. It's okay. We're all right. Dean lied, as neither Dean nor Sam were really dealing with this well. Really? I know how close you and your dad were. Ellen asked in disbelief, basically calling bullshit. Really, lady, I'm fine. Dean said aggressively, telling her to back off. So look, if you can help, we could use all the help we can get. Sam offered, hoping that Dean's current saltiness would sour her opinion of them to the point she couldn't help. Well, we can't. But Ash will. Ellen said. Who's Ash? Nate said. Ash. Ellen called. The man passed out on the pool table jerks awake and sits up, flailing. What? It clo in time. He said. That's Ash. Sam asked, as he would not have guessed that. Um hum. He's a genius. Joe said, as while Ash does have his quirks, he is smart where it counts. One week later on a highway, Naruto was driving his car with Sam in the passenger side and Dean in the back seat. Dean was currently jamming to the Metallica song on the radio. After they had met with Ellen, the boys had taken a job to deal with a clown ghost that was haunting a carnival, though there had been some trouble, since Dean and Sam still were having trouble dealing with John's death. Hence, why Naruto had not said anything about his powers yet. Woo! Listen to her purr. Have you ever heard anything so sweet? Dean said as he missed his car, which still had some work yet before it was ready. You know, if you two want to get a room, just let me know, Dean. Sam asked. Absolutely not, Naruto said, playing along as he rubbed his steering wheel affectionately. Don't worry baby, I will not let him touch you. You're in a good mood, Dean. Sam said to Dean as he got a laugh out of that. Why shouldn't I be? Dean asked. His car still had another week of repairs left to do, but it was going much quicker than he thought it would. No reason. Sam said. My car's almost fixed, we got a case, the gang's back together, things are looking up. Dean said. Wow. Give you a couple of severed heads and a pile of dead cows and you're Mr. Sunshine. Sam and the other two whiners laugh. How far is it yet to Red Lodge? Naruto asked. Uh, about another 300 miles, Sam said. Good. Naruto said as he poured on more speed, Red Lodge Hospital. After posing as reporters to question the local police, the three were in the morgue, looking at the bodies. Apparently, cattle were dropping dead all over town, and now, two murders had happened. They were now in the morgue, posing as doctors to get a closer look. Dean handed Sam a pair of latex gloves and put on a pair of his own, while Naruto put his on, the sound of the gloves smacking against his skin reverberating throughout the room. Sam opened a compartment and wheeled out a corpse. There was a box between its legs. All right, open it. Dean said to Sam. You open it. Sam said, as he was a little grossed out and didn't want to. Wuss. Dean said, earning chuckle from Naruto. Dean carried the box over to another table and flipped off the lid, grimacing. Sam approached, cringing, while Naruto was fine. He was used to seeing this sort of thing while hunting pagans. Well, no pentagram. Dean said. Wow, poor girl. Sam commented. Maybe we should, uh, you know, look in her. See if those wackos stuffed anything down her throat. You know, kinda like the moth in Silence of the Lambs. Dean said as a joke. Yeah, here, go ahead. Sam offered, turning box to Dean. No, you go ahead. Dean said, turning it back to Sam. What? Sam asked. Put the lotion in the basket. Dean quoted from Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, and Sam's the wuss here. Naruto asked. Give me that. Naruto turned the box to him and started inspecting the inside of the, pulling the jaw open and sticking his finger in to feel anything out of place. Sam looked like he was about to hurl. Finding nothing in the that wasn't supposed to be, he was about to give it to Dean, until he saw something on the girl's gums. Well, would y'all look at that shit? Naruto said as he pushed one of the many slits on the gums and out popped a retractable fang. It's a tooth. Sam said. Sam, that's a fang. Retractable set of vampire fangs. You gotta be kidding me. Dean groaned. Well, this changes things. 
Sam said lamely. Ya think. Dean said sarcastically. Problem is, our Vic's the vampire. So, something is clearly up. Someone could already be in town hunting Theses things, which could be a problem since we still don't know what's going on with the cattle deaths. Naruto said put the lip back down. Nighttime the Weiner brothers had gotten their room at the motel at this point and headed to the bar to figure out more about what's going on in town. As they walked in, Naruto absentmindedly noticed another dude that he could tell was a hunter. How's it going? Dean greeted the bartender. Living the dream. What can I get for you? The bartender said. Two beers for my brothers, shot of Jim Bean for me. Naruto said, handing the bartender the cash for it. So, we're looking for some people. Sam said. Sure. Hard to be lonely. The bartender said as he got them their drinks. Yeah. But um, that's not what I meant. Sam said, pulling out a $50 bill, fingering it, and put it on the bar. The bartender looked at it for a moment, then took it, right. So these, these people, they would have moved here about six months ago, probably pretty rowdy, like to drink. Yeah, real night owls, you know. Sleep all day, party all night. Dean said. The African-American hunter sitting by his lonesome managed to overhear them and his eyes were on them. Naruto could feel the eyes on him and glanced back at him, the hunter looking away to not seem too suspicious. Barker Farm got leased out a couple months ago. Real winners. They've been in here a lot, drinkers. Noisy. I've had to 86 them once or twice, the bartender said. Thanks. Dean said. They left their half-finished beers and empty shot glass on the bar and leave. The man who was watching them was gone, a smoldering cigarette left behind on his table. As the whiners leave the building, the man stalked them. They walked down an alley, as they are all aware by now he was following them. He turned the corner and lost sight of them. Walking around the corner, he walked a ways before he turned to try to see where they went. When he turned back around, Naruto and Sam pinned him to the wall, Naruto holding a bowie knife at his throat while Dean had his Colt 1911 trained on him. Open wide. Naruto growled menacingly. What? The guy asked. Show us those pearly whites. Dean clarified. Oh, for the love of, you want to stick that thing someplace else? I'm not a vampire. The dude groaned in disbelief while the three whiners looked surprised. Yeah, that's right. I heard you guys in there. What do you know about vampires? Sam asked. How to kill them? Now seriously, bro. That knife's making me itch. Naruto doesn't have a reply, merely pushing the blade into his skin just a little bit further, telling him to cooperate. The man started to move his arm, and Sam pinned him harder to the wall. Whoa. Easy there, Chachi. The dude said as he slowly brought his right hand to his lip, pulled it back, revealing normal gums. See? Fangless. Happy? Naruto and Sam finally let up and Dean uns his gun, now. Who the hell are you three? parking lot at the man's car, he pulled out his arsenal, which includes the large hook. The Weiner brothers. I can't believe it. You know I met your old man once? Hell of a guy. Great hunter. I heard he passed. I'm sorry. It's big shoes. But from what I hear you guys fill him. Great trackers, good in a tight spot, Gordon went on. You seem to know a lot about our family, Dean pointed out. Word travels fast. You know how hunters talk. Gordon said in assumption. No, we don't, actually. Dean said. I guess there's a lot your dad never told you, huh? Gordon said. So, um, so those two vampires, they were yours, huh? Sam asked. Gordon nodded and said, yep. Been here two weeks. I'm guessing you checked the Barker farm? Naruto asked. It's a bust. Just a bunch of hippie freaks. Though they could kill you with that patchouli smell alone. Gordon said crinkling his nose in disgust as he still remembered the smell. Where's the nest, then? Dean asked. I got this one covered. Look, don't get me wrong. It's a real pleasure meeting you fellas. But I've been on this thing over a year. I killed a fang back in Austin, tracked the nest all the way up here. I'll finish it, Gordon said. We could help. Dean offered, as he really didn't want to leave the case when they just got here. He really wanted something to do. Thanks, but uh. I'm kind of a go-it-alone type of guy. Gordon rebuffed the offer. Come on, man, I've been itching for a hunt. Dean complained. Sorry. But hey, I hear there's a chupacabra two states over. You go ahead and knock yourselves out. 
Gordon said as he got into his car. It was real good meeting you, though. I'll buy you a drink on the flip side. As Gordon drove away, Dean looked at Sam, then at Naruto. We're not quitting this case, right? Dean asked his middle brother expectedly, since he was their ride. Hell no, we ain't quitting. We just got here. We're going after him. Naruto agreed as they headed to his car. At the mill a security guard was sitting in the quiet mill after hours, alone. He heard a suspicious noise and walked outside to investigate. He went up to the roof, continuing to find nothing. He heard something plop into the water and pulled out a crowbar. A crow flew near his head, startling him for a moment. He sighed and relaxed, then turned around to find Gordon attacking him with a machete. The man managed to dodge Gordon's swings and extended his fangs, revealing he was a vampire. Their struggle took them towards a massive electric saw. The vampire managed to turn it on and pin Gordon down below it, nearly decapitating him until Sam pulled him to safety. The piercing sound of a gun was heard, and suddenly, the vampire had a hole in his stomach, directly in line with where his spine should be. On the roof, Naruto could be seen, his form prone, aiming down the sight of his Barrett M82A1 sniper rifle. Vampires can only be truly killed by a decapitation, but they still can't do much without a spine. Dean hit the vampire a couple of times, knocking him over and pinning under the electric saw. He lowered the saw, decapitating the vamp and spraying Dean with blood. So uh, I guess I gotta buy you that drink. Gordon awkwardly to the three that just saved his life. Sam was looking at Dean with a concerned look, while Naruto gathered his equipment, thinking how weird this whole situation was. He was getting more and more suspicious, because this was not typical vampire activity. There was something fishy going on here. Vampires in the town held jobs, but nobody was dying except the vampires. He had a feeling that these vampires were actually feeding on the cattle to try not to kill any innocent humans and attract the hunter's attention. Vampires could technically survive on animal blood. It was like a human feeding on tofu. It doesn't completely fill you up, but it helps one get by. And Naruto only knew of one vampire that lived like that, his ex-girlfriend. Bar back at the bar, the four hunters sat around a table. A waitress brought them another round and Dean reached for his wallet. No, no, I got it. Gordon said. Come on. Dean said back. I insist. Gordon said, handing her the money to the waitress. Thank you, sweetie. He raised his shot glass and said, another one bites the dust. That's right. Dean said as he raised his shot glass in a toast. Sam was sitting back with his arms folded. Sam was sitting back in his chair in deep thought while Naruto was sipping on some Corona light. Dean, Gordon laughs, you gave that big ass fang one hell of a haircut, my friend. Thank you. Dean thanked him. That was beautiful, absolutely beautiful, Gordon said. Yep. You all right, Sammy? Dean agreed, the noticed Sam's salty look. I'm fine. Sam said, though he was not. Well, lighten up a little, Sammy. Gordon said playfully, calling Sam by the nickname his family called him. Mind yourself. Gordon, Naruto said with a glare, you aren't family. Only me and Dean get to call our brother that. Sam nodded in appreciation at his brother coming to his defense, even he was a second from doing that himself. Okay. No offense meant. Just celebrating a little. Job well done. Gordon said as he held his hands up in surrender. Right. Well, decapitations aren't my idea of a good time, I guess. Sam said, as he was also uncomfortable that Dean was cozying up to the guy they just met. Almost like he was trying to find a substitute for John. It didn't sit well with Sam. Oh, come one, man, it's not like it was human. You've gotta have a little more fun with your job, Gordon said. See? That's what I've been trying to tell him. You could learn a thing or two from this guy. Dean said cheerfully. Right, because we totally need to learn stuff from the guy we just saved. Naruto scoffed in annoyance. He hunted on his own for three years now, he killed pagan gods for breakfast. He didn't need to learn anything from what he saw as an obsessive and mediocre vampire hunter. Yeah, I bet I could. Look, I'm not gonna bring you guys down. I'm just gonna go back to the motel. Sam said as he got up. You sure? Dean asked. Yeah. Sam said. Sit tight for a minute Sam. I'm gonna go pay for my drink and I'll give you a ride. Naruto said as he got up. Naruto walked up to the bar to pay for his drink, greeted by the same bartender that greeted them earlier. I'm here to pay my bill. 
Naruto said as he handed the bartender the money. The dude came back a few moments later with the receipt. As he handed Naruto the receipt, Naruto clasped the vampire's hand. Naruto leaned in close and whispered, I know that you're a vampire posing as human. The bartender, Eli, was shocked as he gaped, how did you? It wasn't easy to figure out, but your tip would have sent us on a wild goose chase. It became more clear when Gordon already checked it out and it was a bust. Then there's the cow blood and no reported abduction of humans and the only dead bodies are the vampires, and you've been giving us death glares ever since we came back in. Your nest is feeding off of the local cattle. I'm also going to hazard a guess and say that your nest leader is a woman named Lenore. A growl from Eli was his response. Well, I guess I was right. I want you to get a message to her. I want to speak with her in private without Gordon getting in the way. Have her meet us at the motel. Naruto moved to leave but not before saying, and don't try to abduct us. It won't work. Naruto walked back and said to Sam, let's go. Something I said. Gordon said as he looked after them, curious how he had upset them. Nah, nah, Sammy just gets that way sometimes. And those two are twins, they've always been thick as thieves. Tell you what. Match you quarters for the next round. Dean said. Motel Sam and Nate walk back into their motel room. I think we need to know more about this Gordon. Naruto said as he put his equipment on the bed. I don't know what it is. He just seems, I don't know, obsessive when it comes to vampires. It's rubbing me the wrong way. I think you're right. I don't trust this guy either. I was gonna give Ellen a call. She said hunters pass through all the time. Maybe she can tell us more about him, Sam said. That's an excellent idea. Let's do that. Naruto agreed as Sam got out his phone and put it on speaker. Roadhouse The roadhouse was crowded tonight and Ellen was working behind the bar. She heard the phone ring and picked it up. Harvell's Roadhouse. She said. Hey, Ellen, uh, Sam Weiner. Sam said over the phone, which he had on speaker so Nate could hear. Sam, it's good to hear from you. You boys are okay, aren't you? She asked. Yeah. Yeah, everything's fine. I'm here with Nate, and we had a question, Sam said. Yeah, shoot, she said. You ever run across a guy named Gordon Walker? Naruto said. Yeah, I know Gordon, she said, visibly tensing up on her end. And? Sam asked, pressing for more info. Well, he's a real good hunter. Why are you asking, sweetie? Ellen asked with concern. Well, we ran into him on a job and we're kinda working with him, I guess, Sam said. Naruto rolled his eyes, as he didn't think that saving someone's life really equated to working with them. Don't do that, Sam. Ellen said almost immediately, Naruto and Sam wanting to know more. I, I thought you said he was a good hunter, Sam said. Yeah, and Hannibal Lecter's a good psychiatrist, Ellen said, knowing how crazy Gordon really was. Naruto and Sam look at each other in concern. If that's how she described him, he might be really bad news, look. He is dangerous to everyone and everything around him. If he's working on a job, you boys just let him handle it and you move on. Ellen, Sam pressed as they needed to know more. No, Sam. You. Just listen to what I'm telling you, okay? Ellen pleaded with them. Look Ellen. We want to trust you but Dean's taken a liking to this guy. We need to know more about his bad side so we can wake Dean up. Naruto said over speaker. He's got his hooks in Dean. Ellen asked as that would not be good, she didn't want to repeat what she knew about the guy to try to spare them the truth, but if Gordon had his hooks in Dean, she needed to give them something truly awful about Gordon. Okay, I don't like repeating this story, but you need to know. It starts with Gordon's sister. And so, Ellen told the two the story about how Gordon murdered his sister who had become a vampire against her will. Later Sam walked back to the room after getting a drink from the vending machine. He paused as if hearing something, cautiously opening the door, looking around. He got inside and leaned against the door, relieved. Suddenly a dark figure jumped him from behind. He knocked his first attacker down, then punched the second that came up behind him. The first attacker rose up behind him and grabbed the telephone, but Naruto appeared behind him, knocking him out. Let's tie them up, Naruto said. They tied them up tightly and then, Naruto rifled through their things to find a cell phone with Lenore's number on it. Calling her, he had Sam trace it for him. Once they had the location, the two of them grabbed the tied up vampires and tossed them in the truck they had came in, before taking them back to the vampire nest. Nest as they pulled up to the vampire nest, 
Naruto got out of truck, while Sam pulls up behind him in Nate's car. Sam got out to join him as Naruto drags the two tied up vampires with him. You sure this is a good idea? Sam asked him. Sam wasn't sure walking into a vampire's nest was a good thing. I'm certain. I know who these vampires are, Sammy. Or at least, I'm certain I know their leader. Nathan said as two people walk out of the house. Sam recognized the bartender Eli, and was surprised, as he didn't see that coming. The woman, though, Naruto definitely recognized. As they stood across from each other, Eli growls menacingly at Sam, his vamp teeth coming out. Stand down, Eli. Lenore warned him and Eli pulled back, his fangs retracting. Get the others and take them inside. Eli looked like he wanted to say something else, but did as his leader said and took the tied up vampires back into the house. Naruto and Lenore stared at each other for a little bit before Naruto smiled. I see you've passed your way of life onto others. It hasn't been easy, doubly so with worrying about hunters and keeping off their radar, but we've managed, Lenore said with a wistful smile of her own. I was also a bit disappointed when you sent those goons to bring me and Sam here. I thought we were closer than that, Naruto said. Like I said on the phone, I didn't realize it was you in town. If I had, I wouldn't have sent those two to bring you to me, Lenore pointed out. Um, I'm sorry, how do you two know each other? Sam asked, as he was curious how his brother knew this vampire. Oh right I totally forgot to introduce you two. Lenore this is Sam, my younger twin. Sam, this is Lenore, the first vampire I ever met that doesn't feed on humans. Naruto said and Lenore walked closer to the two. Pleasure meeting you, Lenore said, extending her hand out to shake. Sam was still skeptical and hesitant, so he extended his own hand and shook very slowly. I'm not going to bite you, Sam. Listen lady, no offense but you're not the first vampire I've met. Sam said, not really meaning to be rude, but these two needed to understand he didn't trust Lenore yet. We're not like the others. We don't kill humans, and we don't drink their blood. We never have, Lenore said. Is this for real? Sam asked his twin. Notice, Sammy, that we aren't being eaten right now, Naruto said. Okay, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but shouldn't you be starving to death? Sam asked, because as far he knew, they could only feed on humans. We've found other ways. Cattle blood, Lenore said briefly. You're telling me you're responsible for all that, Sam asked as he connected the dots that Naruto managed to put together earlier. It's not ideal, in fact it's disgusting. But, it allows us to get by. It never keeps us fully sated, but it is enough, Lenore said. Okay, uh, why? Sam asked. Survival. No deaths, no missing locals, no reason for hunters to come looking for us. We blend in. Our kind has barely a few thousand left. Turns out we weren't quite as high up the food chain as we imagined, Lenore said. Oh that reminds me, I wanted to apologize about the vampire we killed earlier. I didn't connect all the dots together until after the fact. Naruto apologized to his ex. What's done is done. I know that Gordon Walker is coming after us. We're leaving this town tonight, Lenore said. Then why let us find you? Why are you even talking to us? Sam asked. Believe me. If it wasn't for my history with your brother Nate, I probably wouldn't be. But I know most of your kind. Once you have the scent you'll keep tracking us. It doesn't matter where we go. Hunters will find us, Lenore said. So you're asking us not to follow you, Sam observed. We have a right to live. We're not hurting anyone, Lenore pointed out. Hey Lenore, Naruto said to her before she turned away as he gave her his cell number. All this aside, it was good to see you. Maybe some other time, you and I could catch up over a drink. When you're not running, I mean. I'd like that handsome. But I'm not sure how much you'd enjoy cattle blood. Lenore flirted with her old boyfriend, lover before they all turned away. Lenore walking back to her safe house and Naruto and Sam walked back to his car. As they reached the car, Sam just had to ask, handsome? Me and Lenore, we used to date when you and I were still high school sophomores. Naruto pointed out as he got in. Motel Dean and Gordon were sitting at the table, discussing strategy over a map. This is the best pattern I can establish. It's sketchy at best. Gordon said, pointing to an area on the map. Looks like it's all coming from this side of town. Which means the nest would be around here someplace, right? Dean said. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. Problem is, there's 35, 
40 farms out there. I've searched about half of them already, but nothing yet. They're covering their tracks real good, Gordon said. Well, I guess we'll just have to search the other half, Dean said before he looked at his watch. What time is it? Where is Sam and Nate? No idea, Gordon admitted. The door opened and Sam and Naruto entered. Where you two been? Dean asked. Family meeting. Outside. Now, Naruto said, as he was not in the mood for Dean's shit. Dean looked to Gordon and said, You mind chillin' out for a couple minutes? Outside the three brothers exit the motel room and walk into the parking lot. I'm calling off the hunt, Dean. We are done here, Naruto said, shocking Dean. What are you talking about? Where were you guys? Dean asked. In the nest. Sam said. You guys found it? Dean asked. Sort of, Sam admitted. How many do you kill? Dean asked, curious how many they did in. None. Naruto said. Well Nate, they didn't just let you go. Dean scoffed. That's exactly what they did. Nate said. All right, well, where is it? Dean asked, eager to go finish them off. Why, so you can tell your new best friend, Gordon. No thanks, Naruto snarled. Sam was more or less with his second brother on this one. We went over that bridge outside of town, but Dean, listen. I'm with Nate on this, we've got to rethink this hunt. I don't think we should go after them. Dean was shocked and demanded to know where this was coming from, why not? They're not like other vampires, Dean. They are not killing people to survive, Naruto said. Dean responded by asking, you're joking. Then how do they stay alive, are undead, or whatever the hell they are? Sam said, the cattle mutilations they live off of animal blood. And you believed them? Dean demanded. Look at us, Dean. We left without a scratch, Naruto pointed out. Wait, so you're saying? No, man, no way. I don't know why they let you go. I don't really care. We find them, we waste them, Dean resolved. Why? Sam asked. What part of, vampires, don't you guys understand? If it's supernatural, we kill it, end of story. That's our job, Dean said, believing it was that simple. No, Dean, that is not our job. Our job is hunting evil. And if these things aren't killing people, they're not evil, Sam argued back. Of course they're killing people, that's what they do. They're all the same, guys. They're not human, okay. We have to exterminate every last one of them, Dean argued refusing to believe it. No they aren't, Dean. The only things that were dying before Gordon showed up were the cattle. No human has died since they came here six months ago. So no, we are not exterminating them. Naruto argued, putting his foot down metaphorically. Dean tried to convince them and said, Gordon's been on those vamps for a year, guys, he knows. Sam asked in surprise, Gordon. Dean said simply, yes. You're taking his word for it over ours. Sam demanded. Dean answered, that's right. Ellen told us he's bad news, Sam said. Dean blanched and asked, You two called Ellen? Sam nodded and Dean continued, And I'm supposed to listen to her. We barely know her. No thanks, I'll go with Gordon. You know Gordon even less than Ellen. You would dare trust the word of that psychopath over the two brothers you've known your entire life. Naruto was infuriated at this point that Dean was taking the word of some dude they just met over their own and gripped Dean by the hem of his jacket. What are you on about? Dean asked. That guy is not just some hunter, Dean. He's a psychopath that doesn't care who he kills so long as he can kill vampires. He'll kill anybody that he thinks will get in his way, even those that would help him, like you. Naruto growled. Did he tell that story about how he killed his first vampire? Yeah, he told me about how it kidnapped his sister and that's how he got into hunting, Dean said. And did he also tell you about the vampire that kidnapped his sister? that he turned Gordon's sister and Gordon murdered her without even blinking? Sam asked Dean, shocking him. What? He asked, shocked to hear something like that. To the few people that he's told this story to, he would say something like, it wasn't my sister anymore, it wasn't human. I didn't blink. He didn't even try to help her, Dean. Sam said, trying to reach his brother. Look Dean. I know that you don't trust Ellen because we barely know her, and that's fine. But do you not trust us? Did you not grow up with us? Did we not hunt alongside you for years? Sammy and I both knew there was something off about Gordon and we are trying to tell you that. Is our word, worth nothing to you? 
Naruto pressed, with a bit more sensitivity in his voice. Dean looked at the ground and between his two brothers before saying, of course it is. Then come with us, Dean. Meet Lenore and see what I saw when I met her. She's not evil, she not a threat. Give us the benefit of the doubt. You owe us that. Sam pleaded with Dean, and from the look in his eyes, the two younger whiners finally got through to their more stubborn brother. Okay fine. Let's go meet her. Dean grumbled out, as he still was not happy about, because of how he was raised to hate all monsters, but they were right. He needed to trust his brothers, and deep down, he did. But before we do that, I've got a clean house. Naruto said as he let go of Dean and walked back to the room, pulling out his Beretta as he opened the door, expecting to find Gordon still there and put a bullet in his head, but Gordon was gone. Do you think he went after them? Sam asked, as they came up to the door to find Gordon gone too. Probably, Dean said. Hop in the car. We're going after him, Naruto said. Farmhouse Gordon was dipping his knife into a jar of dead man's blood. Lenore was tied to a chair nearby, covered in cuts, pale and sickly. He circled around her, sliced the bloody knife across her, the blood of the dead man on the knife seeping into her veins and weakening her, causing her to groan. This was the scene that Sam and Dean walked into. Sam, Dean. Come on in. Gordon said when he saw them enter the house. Hey, Gordon. What's going on? Dean asked, though he could see it clearly. Just poisoning Lenore here with some dead man's blood. She's going to tell us where all her little friends are, aren't you? Wanna help? Gordon offered, all to giddy to torture a vampire. Dean looked a little uncomfortable. Look, man. Dean tried to say, as he was starting to believe his brothers might be right about this guy, but Gordon didn't hear him. Grab a knife. I was just about to start in on the fingers. Gordon said, dragging the knife across her arm, poisoning her more. Whoa, 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 hey, let's all just chill out, huh? Dean said, trying to get him to stop. Naruto was getting one of his bigger guns and if he walked in on the that, he would pump Gordon full of lead without any questions. He might still do that, and Dean wanted to confirm his brothers were right about Gordon first. Gordon said back, not seeing a problem, I'm completely chill. Gordon, put the knife down. Sam stepped towards Gordon, Dean stops him with a hand on his. Sounds like it's Sam here needs to chill. Gordon said as he got a dark look in his eyes. Look Gordon. Dean told me about the vampire that killed your sister and he deserved to die, but Lenore. Sam said, baiting Gordon in order to get the truth for Dean from Gordon's own so Dean could not refute it. Gordon laughed darkly. Killed my sister. That filthy fang didn't kill my sister. It turned her. It made her one of them. So I hunted her down, and I killed her myself. Gordon revealed to Dean's shock. You did what? Dean asked in shock, as this revelation proved that Sam and Nate were right. Gordon continued, it wasn't my sister anymore, it wasn't human. I didn't blink. And neither would you. You're right. And I won't blink either. Naruto announced as he popped out from behind the corner, standing directly behind Lenore his Mossberg 590 locked and loaded, pointing at Gordon, getting their attention. As I kill you, I mean, Naruto amended before he pulled the trigger, emptying a 12-gauge slug into Gordon's left lung. Gordon groaned as he dropped to his knees, clutching his wound. Some of the blood had gotten on Lenore's face and because of her being weakened by dead man's blood, she was starving for more blood. She was unable to control herself for a moment, and she hissed, her fangs coming out. You think she's so different? Still want to save her? Look at her. They're all the same. Evil, bloodthirsty. Gordon groaned from his spot on the floor, trying to stem the bleeding from his gaping wound. Lenore managed to get a hold over herself, retracting her fangs, and turned her face away. No never. I swore I would never drink human blood, she groaned out. Dean could see now that his brothers were indeed right about her. Guys, untie her and get her out of here. Take her to the car. I'll be along shortly. Sam walked around the table to untie Lenore and Dean decides to help after taking a few moments to process all of this. Naruto ed his shotgun and aimed at Gordon's face, preparing to finish him off once and for all. So, this is how I die. Betrayed and done in by my own kind. Gordon mutters as he's already starting to fade from the loss of blood. It's what you get for being a psychopath, Naruto coldly stated and pulled the trigger. Gordon's blood and brains splattering all over the wood. Motel morning Lenore groaned as she woke up, before frantically looking around. 
The last thing she remembered was being captured by Gordon and being tortured by him. She remembered the whiners untying her and Nate shooting Gordon to protect her but she must have passed out after that. Hey, you're up. She heard Naruto's voice as he walked out of the bathroom of the motel room they were in. What happened? Lenore groaned as she sat up. Gordon captured and tortured you. Me and my brothers saved you. You won't have to worry about Gordon either. I scattered his brains all over that kitchen with my shotgun. He won't threaten you anymore. Naruto said. My nest. I need to let them know I'm okay. Lenore groaned as she tried get out of bed but stumbled and almost fell. Naruto caught her in time. Easy Lenore. You're still poisoned with dead man's blood. You need a little bit before you can move well and it's 10 in the morning. Your nest isn't going anywhere. Naruto pointed as he helped her back onto the bed, the closeness between them slowly stirring up old feelings between them. I smell blood. Lenore said, as she could smell it somewhere in the room. Oh that, Naruto said as he got up and opened the small fridge in the motel, which had some blood bags and human food. He pulled one out and closed the door. I went and drained a cow out for you while you rested last night. Figured some fresh blood would speed up the recovery. He handed the blood bag to her and she immediately drank all of it. Cow blood may be disgusting, but right now, she wasn't complaining. As she finished, she felt much of her strength return, but she still wasn't at 100% yet. Thank you, Nate, Lenore said as she set the bag down on the nightstand as he sat on the bed next to her. She looked at her old boyfriend, and maybe it was the fact that she was stuck in here all day or the fact that he saved her, but being in his presence again was making her. You know, our last night was in a motel like this. Yeah, that was a memorable night. Naruto remembered as that was the night she had asked him if he wanted to come with her and be a vampire. He had politely refused, as he did not want his family to hunt him or her as a result, so they spent their last night together in bed and when he awoke, she was gone. Time time, well, we're both here and I don't feel like getting really bad sunburn. Might as well make the most of it. Lenore said as she began stripping out of the clothes that she was still wearing down to black bra and panties. Naruto didn't look long before he grabbed Lenore by the back of her head and pulled her close as he ed her. Didn't take long for her to open her as their tongues massaged each other's, slowly fighting for dominance as Naruto began to take off his shirt. Her hands adored his toned abs, before unbuckling his pants. Lenore moaned when she grabbed his handling fully erect, as Naruto caressed her wet, hot folds, putting a finger inside as he rubbed along her walls. Lenore moaned as the two still enjoyed there, before he inserted two more fingers, spreading them as he explored her. I've missed you. Lenore whispered as her bra was undone as he pulled her closer, squeezing her with his free hand. You should have came back sooner. Naruto said before standing and picking up Lenore, his hands cupping her round ass cheeks as he kept ing her, his tongue exploring every corner in her. He turned her around and set her down on the bed and took her panties off. Naruto ed the side of her thighs, his tongue ing across her flawless skin before coming near her wet entrance. The blonde ed around Lenore's cunt, circling it and laying small s on it to tease her more before his face dove into her cunt, his nose took in the sweet smell, his tongue sticking deep into it. His tongue ed thoroughly with eager gusto, as the heat inside increased with each second. Lenore shivered and shook and shuddered as she could feel her orgasm building up as she moaned his name repeatedly, the blonde had been at it for a steady ten minutes now and each time she came close, he would stop. The vampire pleaded him to end it, as Naruto would go back to her thighs, or pinching her s. It was frustrating and Lenore wanted to come already. Slowly, she felt Naruto stand up, before turning her around on all fours on the bed. The vampire felt the head of his poking against her entrance. Say it. Naruto commanded, as he firmly grasped her hips, as Lenore looked back at him with pleading eyes. Fuck me. Lenore said Naruto pulled his hips back before spearing his deep into Lenore whose walls tightened and coiled around his, trying to milk his every drop of his seed. Lenore moaned lewdly, muttering as she finally came around his. Eyes closed with a pleased smile. Lenore began to feel Naruto move back and forth inside her. She could feel the heat building up inside her as he mercilessly fucked her from behind, grasping a lock of her hair as his hips kept slamming into her. Naruto was enjoying how her heart-shaped ass jiggled with every thrust. This only made Naruto ram faster into her, eagerly ruining her snatch and making her inner walls constricting around him, solemnly swearing to trap his inside her. Lenore's nails dug into the bed as she felt her insides being re-stretched, as she creamed herself. 
Naruto however did not let her recover as he kept thrusting wildly, instincts taking over as he grabbed a fistful of her air, locking it and pulling her up as she shivered each time he hit her womb. Naruto grabbed onto Lenore's tit as he played with her clit, before he began to suck on her neck, as the blonde kept his pace up and hammered away inside her. Then Naruto began to pant, sweat glazed his toned frame as he felt his own limit being reached, but he kept his pace going, as her mounds of flesh freely wildly swayed and Lenore could feel a massive orgasm growing strong within her. Fuck. Naruto said loudly before as his began to spasm while holding Lenore close hole flooding her insides with his seed. Lenore turned to Naruto and the two shared a before she pulled him onto the bed and got on top of him, ing him fully. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.